We should do the Letterman thing. Letterman's in some hot water yeah. today. What happened? He he did a Sarah Palin <laughs> joke. It was a great little joke. I didn't hear it. Uh, and then he was on a show trying to explain. I'm, this is everywhere today. This is Letterman from last night. Sarah Palin was in New York this week. Uh, the hardest part of the trip was keeping Elliot Spitzer away from her daughter. <laughs> now that's... Wow. I'm surprised we haven't heard from Elliot Spitzer either. Wow. But, wow. Uh, <laughs> and it, now, I, I'm not necessarily proud of these jokes. I mean, w we do stuff all the time, and our objective here is to to get a laugh, and, and thank God, you know, we don't have to go to the Hague before the world court to defend them. <laughs> it's a joke. That's all it's supposed to be. That's what this is. Now, here's the other joke they're upset about. Sarah Palin went to a Yankees game yesterday. There was one awkward moment during the seventh inning stretch. Her daughter was knocked up by Alex Rodriguez. Oh, it's a joke. It's a lie. Fuck. It's a sports joke. Yeah. I'm telling you, I recognize that these are ugly. Yeah. <laughs> these are actually ugly. These these are, are, are borderline, but again, in an act of desperation to get cheap laughs, which is what I've been doing for the last 30 years. Why didn't we hear from Alex Rodriguez? There you go. No big deal. That's really good. <laughs> Sarah's all over it, though. She's pissed. Well, well, I think because the daughter that went to the game with her was 14. Yeah, but... It wasn't the other daughter. Yeah, but the other man was just generalized. It wasn't Bristol. It was, yeah, uh, it was the other one. It was the other one. The hotter one, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, they all have, uh, like, snow names. Didn't we talk about that one time? <laughs> yeah. They're, like, Alaskan names. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, money for nothing because you live in an oil state. <laughs> 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 They're going after fucking Not Letterman still, man. Well, she is. Yeah. No, but now there's the the women's group. Uh, where are we at with that? Going after. Hold on a minute. Well, uh, women's advocacy uh, group wants an apology from Letterman for the Palin joke. He made for a couple. He made a couple of. He made a mistake. He made a joke about. I think she had brought her 14 year old daughter. He made a he made a couple of jokes about her one her daughter was like a hooker and that she got knocked up by a rod, and uh, she's funny material. I, 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 I heard yeah. she's in, fucking in, fuming. In era, it it may have been a bad judgment choice. Yeah, but it was funny. Yeah, Be, and it has context to it because right. her but, other daughter is a fucking is an unwed fucking mother. Well, they're focusing on the fact that the wrong daughter was in town, but if you're like a, a joke writer, you know, for Letterman, Palin's in town. Okay, what can we do with Palin? Yeah. That's all they're thinking. They're not looking at the itinerary right. and saying, "Oh, uh, she's here with the younger daughter." But they're discredited. It's just Palin material they're going for. They're in discredited cuz they went after Obama for the retard thing on Leno. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, "Eat my ass." Like, that's yeah. you, you why would you I'm not going to fall for that banana in the tailpipe, man. <laughs> I'm not going to be upset when, when retard doesn't mean some fucking kid who, you know, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. simple jack. Or, yeah. you know, it means, simple dude, jack. you're a dick. It means I'm a dick. when I, I'm an asshole when I bowl. Yeah, you I'm a retard. Up, you're a retard. Look at, look at this one. I mean, uh, fuck. What was the headline? There's a 700-pound bitch on oh TV right now. I know, but God. you got to see what the story's about. A Five girl. Five of brutality. Yeah, but attacking. they just showed the crime, and I can't remember now. Uh, she was beat up, burned. burned with cigarettes or something. And then they cut her hair off in a Chicago park. Uh, oh. Face and scalp were burned with cigarette lighter. Are these the girls that did it, or are these the girls no, that had it must happen? be the ones. Look at her. Big, fat, lonely girl. She probably got beat up. Oh, it's man. amazing what they're not pointing out, though. Oh, oh okay. Is it racial? I know I actually might be uh, oh, some black girls? white and black beating her up. I can't uh, tell. That skinny one, boy, is on top of this big meal. Yeah. Jesus. And they just cut her hair. What'd she do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably just was, know. you know, was her. But the thing is this. When, when David Schuster made his comment about, Hillary, about Chelsea Clinton and they, they crucified him for it, he got suspended for two weeks. And he should not have gotten in trouble for that. And it's just the same thing happening to Letterman. It's like. Uh, you know what? It's great for business. It, 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 yes, yes and no, If he can though. hang in there. This nah, is this is a rough one. Uh, let him survive say, it. He's gonna have to say something. Oh, he did. He did say. <sighs> no, he was I know, sorry. but that wasn't enough because they're still going after him. So he's gonna have to say uh, his apology. If David let him didn't say, seem... shut up. <laughs> that, that, how sort of fast did. would that go away? Yeah. It wouldn't. I'm telling you, not because she's she's because she's being she's Sarah Palin first of all, and she's being vocal. And she's what, what does that mean? And what she, that she mean? gets a lot of media coverage. She she can get the media coverage not whatever anymore, she wants. And she's it's irrelevant. Letterman. It's Letterman. Like, but look at her. They're talking on on fucking the Today Show. They, they have nothing else to talk want. about. So I'm saying she can get media coverage. But she can get media coverage and she can complain. And there's enough people who like her who don't like uh, uh, liberals. What is she asking? 
Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. But I'm saying there's enough people that like her and, and a Republican that would fucking kick it up a, a, a storm. But what is she? Is she coming on just going like, is she going, David should do this? Or she's just going, oh, that was, I heard her thing was like, oh, that was, that wasn't right, Mr. Yeah, Davey is, Letterman. And then like, what does she want now? Like, I don't what know what she, she want wants, or but she's still, she's attacking him. Uh, and she's saying that he was implying he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old, which is obviously not true. But the bottom line is, to hear that from someone who is just a vice presidential candidate is fucking damaging. Why wouldn't somebody on the news say, get over it, Sarah. get get a hold of yourself, bitch? Yeah. Because if somebody made a, a sex joke about Michelle Obama or a fucking hook called her a hooker, true that. there would be a fucking mm. an outcry yeah, and she's true. an adult. She is not, you are not hearing any Michelle Obama in this going Except on. Except by the fucking kid. That's the only one who makes fun of her. Who's the kid? Me. Did you refer to yourself in the third I person and not your did. name, you dick? Well, no, I, I, uh, of course I made what fun of her. What does the kid say? I yeah, made what? fun of her on Letterman. Her dumb eyes. Oh, I made fun of her on uh, on Red Eye. Yeah, but uh, you... I, I Letterman. You don't, I no one, no one, <laughs> Nobody is really fucking with her. They used to fuck with Hillary's ankles. They yeah. used to fuck with the fact that, you know, they, they, she had a lot of pressure on her. And also Sarah Palin, they ruthlessly dogged this bitch. Yeah. And no one really. Do you think Palin's going to be a, a player? No. No way. Of the Republicans not. are leaving her. No. Of course not. She's goofy. She still gets a lot of coverage. They attacked her because she's hot and she's against abortion. She's like a conservative Republican, which uh, just really annoyed people, I think. Let me go to Kat. Kat, what's up? Hey. Um, I was watching the Today Show today, and Sarah Pollan was saying that she was upset because this is lowering the self esteem of young women today. But as I remember, I had low self-esteem in the 90s. My mom had low self-esteem in the 60s. And I'm sure if I ask my grandma or great-grandma, they had low self-esteem back in the 1800s. So I don't know why Sarah Palin is trying to make everything seem so rosy. Well, it's like this. You can't blame Sarah Palin for sounding off about this anymore. I don't like Hillary, but I didn't blame her for trashing MSNBC. You know, when it's your daughter, you kind of got the right to talk a lot of shit about it. I don't, you know. Yeah, the clause Hillary, did, I felt the same way when Hillary did it. Yeah. Damn, yeah, it's, damn, but the thing one. is Look, you know, that she's saying rape jokes are the reason why girls are having low self-esteem. And you know what? I'm I'm sorry. Anything to do with rape, it's a joke. <sighs> jo- laugh at it. If you're not going to laugh at it, you're going to cry about it. Can I ask a quick it. question? You know what? Palin, Palin should speak her mind, obviously, and then just move on. I mean, what? You want Letterman fired or Can something? Can we discuss this really quick I'm for like, like, like a minute? No, I'm not saying you. I'm just no. uh, generalizing. Like, what does she want in the end? You know, she didn't like the joke. All right, speak your mind, get your point out, and that's it. That's can how I, it should work in can America. I, can I say this? End of story. Is this you, Kat? Is this you, Kat? Yes. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> hi. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Who's Kat? I don't know. Kat. I'm the abortion up. doctor. <laughs> abortion doctor. Oh, the good egg. The, she was up in the <laughs> studio. Uh, oh, I heard Letterman coming back in, and he's in trouble still. Oh, that's Sarah Palin thingy. She's like, loving the attention. She's all about getting attention for herself. For what reason, I don't know, because she doesn't have a shot at being our president ever. No. Ever. She's put in that category of people that have uh, been, um, oh, they were vice presidential candidates or even presidential candidates, and they kind of stumble during mm-hmm. the campaign, mm-hmm. and uh, everybody piled on. And then they have that stigma for the rest of their uh, political career. Of being that person, I mean, uh, a, a prime example is somebody like Michael Dukakis. Oh my God! Now Michael Dukakis was ripped apart by, I believe, the elder Bush mm-hmm. uh, when he was running for president, and uh, it was. You cannot get the image of him with that giant tank helmet on, <laughs> bob- wow. bob- bobblehead fucking Dukakis. <laughs> And he thought it was going to be this this picture of here's Michael Dukakis in a tank, and it's going to show him as powerful. And look, you, you don't be afraid. He's he's going to be in a tank. He's Cause a they, they were worried that he wasn't a powerful guy right. and that he wouldn't take care of foreign business. So they're like, all right, we'll do a little photo op. We'll the, show them. The Bush campaign took it. That's how bad it looked. And ran and, with it. And they showed him actually in the tank. It was a video, not so much a still picture. And his head was going like, yeah, 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 yeah like <laughs> bobbling. And he never lived that down. And, and Kitty was what, drinking? And Kitty's drinking. Rubbing alcohol fucking, or whatever the fuck she can Listerine find. and <laughs> fucking Raid. She got a hose to her mouth into the fucking gas tank of the tank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, just amazing. And Palin's not a, look, Palin's not a, I don't think she's a bad lady. She, I think she's way too conservative and she was wrong for the country, but she's got a reputation as being like this awful woman and she's fine. I don't even think she could be the leader of broads, to be honest with you. No, she's way too conservative. She's, uh, whatever. But she's getting a lot more attention because of this Letterman joke, which was just a joke. And uh, I think Letterman explained himself, and that's where it should end. But for some reason in our society, no, because this is way more important than all the other horse shit that's going on in this country. <laughs> that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> America can't afford that risk. That's why we didn't vote uh, Dukakis. It says America can't afford that risk. Wow, he really does look stupid. Oh, this is the Bush ad? Yeah. Okay, yeah, now it makes sense. Uh... This should have been just a joke, should have got the explanation from Letterman, and that should be it. But for yeah. some reason, this day and age, that's never it. They they keep going and going and going until they destroy your uh, livelihood. Yeah. And and then in the end, nothing gets accomplished, by the way. Nothing. Mm -hmm. We just go back to making uh, our jokes as human beings. Yeah. I mean, what the? What did he say that was really Letterman, horrible? He talked about uh, her, um, I, what were they, a date rape uh, uh, a joke that he did? Well, you know, A Rod got her pregnant during the seventh inning stretch. Mm. Yeah, keep your daughter away from Elliot Spitzer. Yep, and uh, you know, Letterman was just going with the whole thing. Oh, Sarah Palin's in New York. Let's let's do some Sarah Palin jokes. Right. He wasn't paying attention to which daughter was in town, and that's what they're trying to focus on. They're insisting that he was making a joke about a fourteen-year-old. Do you honestly think David Letterman would go on his show? And make a sex joke about a fourteen-year-old? Absolutely oh, fucking Paul. not! I, no. I can tell you for a fact Absolutely he would not. I just did the show, and one of my jokes was, "I'll tell you what." I went through it on Letterman recently. This is for real, right, Jimmy? Oh yeah, yeah. You have to go through standards and practices. And Eddie Brill's a buddy of mine who's a comedian. He tells you kind of like what Dave likes, what he doesn't. So one of the jokes I had was, "I'm my girl." I forget how it went. My girlfriend's really liberal, which I guess is normal when you're in high school. So Eddie came back and he goes, um, yeah, the high school thing, they're just a little concerned. It could be misinterpreted as being an underage girl. And I was kind of annoyed, but it's like, I got it, CBS. So I came back and I go, well, how about um, 18? So I changed, that's how I ultimately did the joke. I'm like, uh, a girl who's, uh, that's normal when you're 18. And he goes, he goes, okay, fine. He comes back. He goes, look, they're a little, they, they still think it's like a teenager. I'm like, look, dude, it, oh it's my like God. 18, 18 is, is the age of are consent <clears throat> in yeah. every state of the union. And he went back to them and they were like, okay, fine. They, they, I mean, they, they, they didn't break my balls about it. But I mean, that's how concerned they were. Yeah, yeah. Doing anything that could be misinterpreted as, a, like, I want to fuck an yeah, underage girl joke. They would never do that uh, nah, they just, uh, with a 14-year-old. They would never let that through. No, nah, because he, he even said Dave doesn't like that stuff. Like, And this is off the record. He's just telling me this. He's like, nah, Dave hates that stuff. He was so plain with, with the fact girls. that the daughter got knocked up. Yeah. He wasn't he mm -hmm. didn't, he wasn't even a, a, talking about the 14-year-old. Yeah. So why don't we start there, you idiots out there? Yeah. Including Sarah Palin. You're, you're supposedly smart enough. Yeah. You know. Why don't you do a little research on Letterman? You'll see that he's he's not a fan of uh, the underage jokes to begin with. More knee jerk. But bullshit. anyway, it, it leads to today, and uh, now we go after Andrea Pizer. She, uh, what paper does she write for? Aunt? Oh, New York Post. It's the Post. Post. Yeah. And she's just you got to read every single word of this article. Uh, by the way, this sometimes is Pizer is okay. Like I, I go back and forth with her. Like sometimes I like her, and other times I just I want to cut her feet off. Well, this one I don't like her. When I read this right from the first little paragraph i thought all right this woman has no idea what the fuck she's talking about right. when it comes to this stuff do a little research andrea Pizer, the headline sick of the late hate show with conan and dave that's the whole so thing. all of a sudden because of one well she's gonna give you an example of example a Conan joke and an example of letterman joke all of a sudden it's a hate show yeah really they're, they're, How, they're that's a big shows. that's a big jump right there yeah, if someone quote slips Hate How does it go from <clears throat> slipping with a joke, in, uh, in in some people's opinion, to now your whole show is about hate? That's ridiculous. Hate you should and, be fired uh, for misrepresenting these uh, late night talk shows. Well, it rhymes. Hate and racism. No, hate, hate, hate and, and racism hate. are used much too much. Oh yeah. In, in circumstances where they just are not even uh, relevant. But uh, yeah, hate the late hate show with Conan and Dave. Uh, and then and Andrea writes, Johnny Carson is rolling over in his grave. Probably Even, get another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Even the late Lenny Bruce is having a fit. What? Uh, right Lenny there. Bruce Lenny Bruce is having a Bruce? fit? 
The guy yeah. that was all about pushing the the envelope. Let me let me give you let me give you a little bit of a. Are you uh, kidding me? I'll give you a little bit of a thing on what this article is about. She doesn't like the fact that women are are being uh, victimized in humor these days, and that she sees it as white women, especially, are the last holdout of people that you can joke about with impunity. Not true. Not true. If you're like a white man. guy, look at TV commercials. If it's you're all just about making white fun of the guy, white male. you're a fucking moron. You can't do anything right without your intelligent wife or uh, your black banker uh, helping you out. Uh, you're just a, a dummy. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, she's got that wrong. But the whole thing, if you remember Johnny Carson, uh, she's thinking of what the little animals on Johnny's head, and oh, that's fun. Oh, look at that. He's doing a little bit or something. He's doing Karnak. How about the Mighty Carson art players, where he wheeled out, uh, what was her name? Uh, you said it to me. Yeah, the big yeah. titted monster. That the big, big blonde. Carol Wayne. Carol Wayne. She Carol Wayne was part of the Mighty Carson art players. Look up uh, images of Carol Wayne. And she came out, and Johnny was like this, um, he'd play kind of this uh, shyster sales guy. Oh, right, right, And he'd right. have like a pointer and stuff, and everything he said was a monster tit joke <laughs> on this uh, uh, woman, mm -hmm. Carol Wayne. That was the only reason she was famous in Hollywood and the only reason she was on f fucking Carson. And the second she'd talk, because right. she would say something, he'd be, and he'd pretty much go, no, shut up. Right. Just you keep your right. mouth shut. Right. Who, it, did anyone hear her? Right. You know, it was, it was all about degrading this woman yeah so why would Carson uh, be rolling on her tits why would he be rolling over in his grave he did way worse than Letterman did. ever did yes way worse on a regular basis but she's like Johnny Carson's rolling over in his grave what to get a better look <laughs> right it's there's not she has no idea what Carson did she's looking back at, at Carson with the rose rose colored glasses on mm -hmm. my friend uh and and Lenny Bruce stop it Lenny Bruce took He's off. having a fit? Sorry. I don't think so. This Lenny Bruce would have been all for uh, anything he being would, said. If Lenny Bruce was alive, he'd be like, thank God we could still make fun of something. Yeah, yeah. All, he was all about just making fun of everything. Yeah. But he was like, all right, the, all these guys are off limits. Well, I'll still be making fun of women. If Lenny yep. Bruce and was, white males, what the fuck? If Lenny Bruce was alive, the type of comedy he did, he'd still be saying nigger. He'd be saying cunt. Yeah. He'd be saying everything you're not supposed to be saying. Right. And not to be hateful, but he 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 was one of the first guys to say you remove the power from those words when you use right. them and you're making fun of them. Which I totally agree with. And, and he'd he, probably he be wondering why in this day and age it's still going on. He would have wanted to spit in Sarah Palin's face, yeah. and he would have loved Letterman's jokes. We, yeah. put so much, we put so much power into these words. Mm -hmm. It's so obvious. So obvious. Yeah. At this point, just let the word fuck everywhere. <laughs> what, what is the big deal with the word the fuck? Children. The children. The children. The children. It's always you're about not, children. You're not really around children these days, Aunt. No. They say fuck. I know. They love Everybody words. says fuck. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the, so the first paragraph there just was, it's sentence. It's Wait, really annoying. Can I slow you down again, Ant? Is it true mm -hmm. that Carson also punched his wife? Well, there were, cigars and scotch? there were allegations of, um, domestic, uh, uh, unrest, <laughs> unrest in the Carson house. But he guess, was married and divorced many times and he did make a lot of divorce jokes and, and, uh, they were not very, um, not very pleasant as far as his wives went. Yeah. But um, focusing just on his show, he pretty much, you know, l looked at women like they were oh, second-class yeah. citizens on his own show. Yeah, yeah, they're, even, they're even sex his, objects. Even his Hollywood guests like uh, Raquel Wells, can I yeah, you know, yeah. pet your pussy or whatever the fuck he did? I think that was urban legend, but... Really? Yeah, I don't think it was ever said if you, you, you know, would you like to pet my pussy if you move the cat? Right. But he they said never that. would have. Yeah, that's, that's so. urban legend. I'll look that up. It's urban legend. Go to Snopes. They'll fucking All fill right. you in. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so that's she true. says that. And then <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you, you were watching David Letterman, a bitter guy who never saw a woman or a Republican he could stand, trashing Sarah Palin's 14 year old daughter by <laughs> joking that she was date raped by Alex Rodriguez and stalked by Elliot Spitzer. 
You may have missed the memo. Hold on, he didn't say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ann. He didn't say date raped. Of course. He said knocked up, and he miss, He was talking about the 18-year-old who was pregnant, and he said knocked up. So let's, She's elaborating. Which, let's yeah. not, let's which, not by the, which, by the way, that much. the guy who said the joke explained what he meant yeah. by his joke. You idiot. I've yeah. done the show. You can't do... If he pedophile mentioned, jokes on his show, he hates them. And if you me- if he mentioned the the young daughter by name, then you got a point there, Andrea Pizer. But he explained exactly what he meant by yeah. his joke, and the and the history of his show proves otherwise as well because he didn't mm-hmm. allow uh, little Jimmy Norton to do his underage joke. Yeah, they just and they say he just doesn't like them. And all that would have taken was a little research on your part, you dopey reporter. Yeah, it's just lazy. And he's and she's got to um she's got to give this dig on Conan, which is ridiculous. His struggling brother up the dial, Conan O'Brien, it's like... First of all, me. they're not brothers. The guy, well, I, I think brother in... Late night talk late shows? Talk, yeah, she didn't mean yeah, literally. But but, no, I understand that, but they're fierce enemies. They, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. they wouldn't consider themselves uh, you know, brothers in, yeah. in any form of the world. I think she's just yeah, trying to say like they're brothers in the late night war thing. But uh, whatever. You know, the whole thing is s- struggling. Is like the guy just started in the in the slot. Maybe give him you know a little yeah. time to see if he's struggling. Mm-hmm. He's just doing a show, struggling. So because well, she's got to say that uh, on Thursday night was having a blast slurring women and Jews, two groups that may constitute the last permissible sick comedy staples. Here's Conan. And then she gives the example of uh, Conan's joke. Political experts say that. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Netanyahu is expected to endorse what he calls a two-station, a uh, two-state solution for Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side, uh, but have no contact. Netanyahu said, "It will be exactly like being married to a Jewish woman, but um bump," she puts, "but um bump," you know, live side by side but have no contact, just like li- married with a Jewish woman. All right, that's the joke. In my house, I rolled my eyes with disgust. Um, but my husband, who happens to be married to a Jewish woman, shouted at the television and started to change the channel. He probably yelled, good point, Conan. <laughs> <laughs> what did he shout, lady? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shouted at the television, good point, and then went to the History Channel. <laughs> she, they, they never Watch suck your few. cock anymore, Conan. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Conan seemed to realize he'd blown it. He fumpered, I don't even know what word that is, uh, pointing to the one convenient, identifiable Jew in his staff, the band leader Max Weinberg, and said, that's the first joke written by Max Weinberg. Uh, The band leader uh, grinned stupidly and put his thumb in the air. What would you want him to do, boo, you dummy? Yeah, yeah. And to say the Jews are victims, let's be honest here. Jewish people are not victims in show business. You yeah. can't say that they're abused or mistreated because right. somebody makes a joke about staying married to a Jewish. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. It's, Stop it's, it. Mm-hmm. It's based on a stereotype. It's been around for years. It's, it's, it's a joke. Take it as such. The only thing I'll agree with her on is are there, uh, would someone, and this is any host late night, any of them, would they have made a joke about a stereotype about a black woman? She could, Never. She goes into that. Never. It goes without saying that if you change the races, make a joke about African-American women or Latinas, you'd be groveling to Al Sharpton's feet before the show ends. I'll agree with her there um, that that happens. I don't agree it should, that's for sure. But women, specifically white women, make up the last group that uh, one may freely stereotype to get a cheap laugh. Um, I don't believe that. No, I don't either. I think, again, white men a really fucking uh, just fair game to be portrayed as dummies um, just uh, uh, in marriage they're portrayed as the weak stupid guy that just brings home the money doesn't know how to do anything the wife's got to help him out put his fucking clothes on feed him and shove him out the door to the retard bus not surprisingly the left has been notoriously silent on the issue where are the marches, the boycotts? The N, uh, National Organization for Women did elect Letterman into its media hall of shame. How scary. Well, what are supposed to do? What are supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Put him in, in TV jail? Letterman replied that he thought he was joking about the sex life of Palin's 18-year-old daughter, not the 14-year-old one. 
he thought he was joking. About, no, he, you don't say, I thought I was joking about that. You you were joking about that. Right. How would you say, I thought I was? But mistakenly, I would, right. no. The 18-year-old one was the one that got pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so he was joking about the 18-year-old dummy. It's for a better joke if you're referencing something that happened. Right, what happened to the 14-year-old? Nothing. Nothing. So he's not fucking talking about her. <laughs> right. Christ. Stupid. Uh, it's this... so obvious to me. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah. It, it, Why are you not... trying to spin this another way? There's no way he's talking about the 14-year-old because the 14-year-old wasn't involved in this stuff. The 18-year-old was out of wedlock, pregnant. When you make a joke, you try to reference something. Yeah. Right? Uh, this is, I love this part, though. In 2006, I attended a, and then it's in quotation marks, comedy fundraiser at what Town Hall. What does that Hall. mean? That means there wasn't comedy there? Right. She oh. she said the, the oh, word comedy boy. was in the fundraiser thing, but uh, as, oh. as far as she's concerned. So you find you know, oh. other things funny and not what you saw yeah. that night. Comedy fundraiser at Town Hall to raise money for homeless women, at which uh, uh, alleged funny man, Louis C.K., now, you know something? Who alleges it? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care who the fuck you are. Louis C.K. is funny. You might not find his comedy you, to be your cup of tea, right. lady. But he's proven his funny. He's proven he's a funny funniness. guy. His, yeah. The guy is uh, hysterically he's, he's funny. He's proven his worth and funny. He's clever. He's funny, creative. There's no denying it. Just look at his resume. He's been involved with a lot of funny things. Yeah. And this... Some bitch is complaining about white women and Jewish women being stereotyped, and all she's doing mm -hmm. is coming off like a fucking prude. Yeah. Like a stick in the mud prude yep. who can't take a joke, who wants to be heard. It's like you have a column in the New York Post. How badly, like, what else do you need to be heard? Yeah. You need protests? You don't want women made fun of? Shut the fuck up. Oh, I bet she laughs her ass when Whoopi Goldberg goes off on fucking, you know, George Bush sure. when he, she was doing that. Or, uh, you know, oh, she's laughing her ass off no matter mm -hmm. how tasteless the joke is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, because that's another woman. And, yuck. When that friggin' frying pan faced. What's her name? Cho. Uh, Margaret. Oh, Cho. Margaret Cho starts fucking uh, going off on her shit. I bet she thinks it's hysterical. See, I don't think Margaret uh, Cho is funny, but no, others, but others find find her. Lover. Right. So, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put her in quotations. Yeah. yeah quotations. Right. You're right. She's not a she's quote not, unquote comedian. She's right. a comedian. Yeah. She's a comedian that I don't find funny, but many, many people do to the point where she's making a very good career. She doesn't do a quote unquote. Comedy act. Comedy. No, it really is a comedy act. It really act. is. It's just not unquote. something you like. Right. Do you question if, like, if someone gets a bad blowjob, did they get a quote-unquote blowjob? <laughs> no, they got a blowjob that wasn't good. <laughs> right. So don't say, there's no allegations of Louis being a funny man, or it's not an alleged yeah. comedy show. It's it, you. It was a comedy show. Yeah. Uh, she should have said, in 2006, I attended a comedy <sighs> fundraiser at Town Hall that I did not find funny. I personally did not find funny. Right. That's fine. But she wants the whole world to but, find yeah. it not funny, because she doesn't find it funny. I attended a comedy fundraiser with alleged funny man, Louis CK. No. Funny man. You don't find him funny because you're a prude. Uh, Louis CK. Joked about decimating his stupid four-year-old daughter by bashing her head in. <laughs> Good. God damn. Who does that? Louis. It's great. He's, he's, Louis's honest about the annoyance you get at your kids. I don't yeah. have kids, but he's like, all parents feel it, and he's just fucking up, brutally and honest he, about it. And he's it. a fantastic father. Thank he's you. not bashing his kid's that. head in. Because he's picking his kid up at school. He's dropping yeah. her off. He's doing things. I mean, he's made it very obvious that he just loves his kids to death. Yeah. He has stopped uh, comedy routines that he was doing on the phone. Maybe they're not routines, but just being funny on the phone because his kid needed something. Yeah, immediately. But immediately. she doesn't know that. You she know, it's know alleged, that alleged funny man. Why would you do research on Ugh. the person you're trashing in your article, you dope? And then she goes, comic Patrice O'Neill gave men lessons about improving their orgasms by paralyzing their partners <laughs> while in the act. <laughs> What year is this, by the way, this, this fundraiser? Uh, three years ago. 2006, yeah. And now she's referencing it? In, yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's, you have yep. to reach back three years to find other things about girls you didn't oh, like, you oh, fucking prude. Yeah, she put this in her file, just oh. waiting to use it someday. What a terrible <laughs> fuck she must be. She probably the, has files on everything, uh, waiting to reference them. Here's the horrible part. And this was a fundraiser for homeless women, many of them victims of domestic violence. By comedians? So I don't think this. so. Louis and Patrice both make a lot of money.
both gave their time right. and brought their art to, to help these women. And what you do is you get in and you analyze a piece of the art that you didn't like, you dumb fucking broad. Yeah. You dumb... Where is if Stephen King had come and done a speech and raised money for domestic violence or whatever it was, or say uh, children who have been injured, would she go back and analyze that uh, it had murdered murdered children? In it? Murdered or, children. Of course not. Right, right. That was wonderful of them. But once again, fucking comics. People have to analyze everything we say. Is oh, that was inappropriate. That was fine. That was inappropriate. Yep. Fuck you, lady. Yeah, you got to You got. You are looked at in comedy. You are looked at like whatever the fuck you're saying is your real, honest, personal feeling on the subject instead of it being comedy. Like you said, Stephen King has written books about, I don't know how many friggin' stories he has with dead kids in it, you know? Look at Pet Cemetery. Right. Kids just get plowed over by a tractor trailer. It's fantastic. And, uh, you know, where's the outrage? Oh, my God, he's obviously hates children. and that Right. No. But a, com a comedian does something about, you know, bashing his, his <laughs> four-year-old daughter's head in because she's being annoying. It's a joke. He's not literally taking his daughter's head and bashing it in. And he's not saying, hey, all kidding aside, the way to deal with this is to bash your daughter's head right, in. Right, right. And everyone knows that. But for some reason, people Gage. feel safe being in, 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 and empowered Crazy when they object kid. to humor. I don't fucking understand it's, it. It's, and you can never give in to it. You have to just, like like a woman yeah. like this, just attack her verbally. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's war on white women. Only this one is being is fought really? with no. water. Where, where's the war? There's no war on white what women. What are you talking it's, about? She, she's I'm fighting with my cock. Mind. Yeah, that's where the war is. Yeah, that's what Letterman was thinking. We're at war, so uh, you know, I, I got this little ditty. He, he made a million jokes that night. Uh, yeah, it's war on white women. Attention. Only this one is being fought with water balloons and whoopee cushions. Being the, you know, <laughs> comedians are doing it. Be more funny! When do, who's using water balloons and whoopee cushions? And that, by the way, is oh, why. Oh, it's war on women! That's <laughs> 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 who's using it. Jesus. Give me a break. Uh, wielded by men who think statutory rape and racial slurs are funny. I'm not laughing. Who cares if you? I and she's right. The, I do think both of those things uh, are have humor value. They're not funny. Here's what she doesn't get: statutory rape, you dumb broad, is not funny. Uh, uh, most racial stereotypes aren't funny. That's the beauty of making people laugh at them. Yeah. You fucking dumb That's broad. The talent oh, in absolutely. making people laugh. Oh, here, poor little Gage. Oh, get your kite string, Gage. Meh, meh. That's fantastic. Little they really Gage run Gage gets, over for this? Oh, hell yeah. They really ran over a little kid. No, Look at his little bloody shoe. No, no, no. <laughs> Holy oh, it's shit. Fantastic. They, wouldn't, they wouldn't do that these days. Not fair. Not fair. I've never little Gage is a creep. Never seen the movie. Really? Wow. It's a creepy the movie. The book was fucking horrifying. And there's a great part yeah, in the yeah. book where King's at the wake, and he's just talking about if one more person comes up to him and talks... About how at least he didn't suffer. He said, "I'm going to oh, scream." Right, right. Yeah. One yeah. more person says that to me. It was, I forget how he wrote it, but he's so good. Right. Let's go to the phones because everyone yeah, has a, an cool. opinion on uh, what Ant was reading today. David in North Carolina, we start with you. You want to stick up for who? Yeah, uh, I want to stick up for Palin. Yeah, I'm, I don't agree with the way she's going about this, and I certainly don't agree that somebody should lose her job over it. Obviously, because I'm an O and A fan. Right. But. At the same time, this isn't like a one-time incident. I'm sure she would have let it go if it was. No, but, but she... They have been, it, yeah. they have been pounding her for months. But the thing is, when you get a candidate that... It, do you think... Look up how many late-night talk show hosts have goofed about George W. Bush and how stupid he is and everything else during his administration when he was president of the United States. It opens... When you enter the political forum, and especially when you're running for an office as high as vice president of the United States, the talk show hosts are going to pummel you on whatever uh, uh, you you put out there. And if your daughter, if you're this conservative Republican, and your daughter gets fucking knocked up out of wedlock, uh, they are going to fucking jump on it. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh 
I mean, she's just the constant pounding. She's not a Washington regular. She's a governor in the last. Doesn't time. matter. You know, she put her face in there. She put her yeah. foot in the old ring to become vice president. And now that she's uh, done and got back, Geraldine Ferrara, she went through the same shit with her fucking husband. Uh, 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 what did, did he go to jail for that? I don't, or, there were some tax issues. There were some I don't tax know. issues. I mean, that whole thing happened. Um, uh, the, uh, the first George Bush and his his old bag looking wife. I mean, you can <laughs> go back and look at um stuff that had happened uh with any president. Clinton and the cigar. <laughs> yeah, Clinton, the whole uh, sex thing with the cigar, Monica, Monica Lewinsky. I mean, how many <laughs> fucking instances was that brought up? It, at night after night for years that went on. Yeah, but aren't you tired of, it just seems like... Might be, might be tired of it. Thing after thing, incident after incident, but any time a conservative, especially a conservative woman says something, oh, it's open season, man. You're right we about, hold on. Her apart. You're right about one thing, in, in the sense that, uh, I don't know if it's a conservative woman, but it, it is much safer, and this is across all forms of entertainment, yes. to attack a conservative or a conservative woman than it is to attack a liberal or a liberal woman or a black right. woman because the liberals who are, are a lot of times that you know kind of involved in the media and the more the more ver vocal ones will not attack you for attacking conservatives exactly. but that doesn't make it right mm -hmm. just because liberals are very phony about uh where their outrage comes, it doesn't make it right. There's another reason, though, that the conservatives are uh, the butt of a lot of the jokes and the liberals aren't, is conservatives, just by nature, open themselves up to hypocrisy because of their their stance and their platform. Yeah, true. It, it's this whole wholesome family yeah. values, things like that. So then when something happens and they trip over their own dicks or uh, one of their kids gets pregnant out of wedlock, it makes them look like a hypocrite, and that is fuel, man. That's fuel right there. Yep. There's a couple yeah. things going on. A liberal could just say, oh, hey, this, yep. you know, fuck it. I got a gay daughter. I did this. This, my daughter got knocked up. Who cares? But they're going to be, well, they're liberal. They, you know, probably taught that way of life in their family. You know, the conservatives, though, oof, they got to walk that line. Um, the second they teeter from it, it's joke time. There's a couple things going on. Uh, what's that website, Danny? It's called Fire David Letterman. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, unfortunately, it is. <laughs> There's a website called uh, that, Fire David Letterman. There. What? That's stupid. There, nobody should be losing their job over right. this. Right. All right. Well, I appreciate you. At well, least according that. to this guy, Michael Patrick uh, Leahy, uh, he should be fired. Hey. And there's a uh, there's a sample letter that you could cut and paste that uh, you know. Nice how he stole the drudge format for his uh, website. No uh, kidding. It's fire David, yeah. David I, I Listen it, to the opening paragraph of this letter, though. I, okay. I encourage the uh, the listeners that don't agree with the firing of David Letterman or, or the attempt at that to go there and uh, state your opinion. Uh, yes, Danny. It says, Dear Late Show Advertisers, as an advertiser oh, on the David Letterman the Show, you endorse his point fuckers. of view. I am appalled that your Mother company supports fuckers. the rape of young girls. But it's just like mother but, but it's great that that to be honest with you I'm glad that this idiot uh, worded it that way because that is so obviously no no advertiser even if yes. they're a little nervous thinks that Letterman supported the rape of a young it's like of that's course. right there he's just wrecking his fucking case and, then, and, and they're then, attempting to have what a rally this Tuesday outside the Ed Sullivan theater you know what else how many I, of our listeners can we get together for uh, for Dave an advertiser doesn't necessarily agree with what the person is saying on a show they're advertising on. Mm -hmm. They are getting an audience that they are uh, targeting for their product. It doesn't necessarily mean they agree with everything. Where did that fucking come from? Mm -hmm. oh, that oh. started a while ago. So, and they're attempting a rally, so th there'll be some people out there tomorrow. That's who's, for sure. Who's Michael Patrick Leahy? The name him? sounds familiar, Oh, look man. at him. Some author, apparently. I've never heard of him before. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, he's so he's books. he's trying to sell some books. Okay. Very oh, and then he has his books there. Great. That's wonderful. Can we blah, get? Blah, is blah, it possible blah, to get him on the? Uh... Let me say hi to David in Kansas City. David. I was going to. Morning, boys. Hey. Talking about what you used to be able to get away with on TV. Yep. So this is going to make me sound like a real hillbilly. RFD channel where I'm at that has a uh, hee haw on. <laughs> of course. And they're does. out in the cornfield the other day. And uh, big old fat Lulu asked Junior Samples, 
She said, tell me something nice. She said, you know, for a great big fat girl, you don't sweat very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that hee-haw. That's pretty yeah. funny, though. <laughs> great big uh, fat girl, you don't sweat very much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that rules. Uh, let's go to Jared in Boston. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, uh, she mentioned she was watching Conan with her husband, right? Is there anything in the article mentioning that he was yelling at the TV while fucking her through a sheet? Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, boy. See, those are the type of hate-filled <laughs> jokes that... I love them. I mean, this, this is a great observation from Mark in Connecticut. Mark, he picked up on something that you read in that article there, Aunt Mark. Hey there, Mac. Yeah, what's up, fellas? Hey. Uh, so, yeah, well, Pale, you know, uh, Pizer, yeah. this quote-unquote Conan, she's, she's saying that that uh, Conan, you know, that, that Max that she saw in reality is a joke. Yeah, let me help you out. Your phone's crapping out, and uh, basically, Mark uh, pointed out that sh she said the husband turned the channel after that uh, Conan joke. It was right. about to. Yeah, she. Oh, does does it say God about to? I thought it said he changed the channel. I think he started to change the channel. I could be wrong. Oh, okay, because Mark is pointing out. Then how would uh, Pizer know? You know how Conan handled the joke that didn't go started so started well. to change the channel. How do you oh. start to change the you channel? You either change the channel or you don't. It's not like what do they have an old TV? You got to get up and tick 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 yeah. tick. How no, do you do start to change? Do you see how her husband did the right thing? Mm. He heard something he didn't like, yes. and he went to change the channel. Now, nah, I don't go for that, and he turned... That's all you do. And yeah, what happened? True. This fucking nudge, this prude, no, 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 leave it. So she could feel victimized, so she yeah. has something to write about. What and, bullshit. And just to, just to go with your yeah. point, if enough people change the channel... Show goes away because it's gone. not getting the ratings, and then the problem is solved. Right. You shouldn't be trying to solve the problem yourself if there's other people that are enjoying that type of entertainment, mm -hmm. you dummy. And that's all we should be worried about. You don't like something, turn off the fucking radio station, change the channel, and if enough people do that, the problem will go away because they're not getting the ratings for the advertisers and the money. But, but you are right, Ant, as far as the conservatives do kind of set themselves up for yeah, certain type of jokes and criticism because... They paint themselves as the moral crusaders. Right. right. Cheney has a lesbian daughter, and it's the repulsive stance they take on gay marriage, yep. and you know, Ch Cheney's a joke yeah. too because now he's like uh, basically saying he's for the whole uh, gay marriage thing. Now that he, you know, he's not in office anymore. Fucking, it's it's all bullshit. Dennis, South Carolina, what's going on? Hey guys, uh, I hate to say this, but you know, if they gonna fire Amos and everybody else, I say let's keep it consistent and go after letter. Hell, fucking no! We got to stop the firings. Yeah, just because it was wrong to fire Amos doesn't mean and I hate to say two wrongs make a right, but you can't fire Letterman and keep the same asshole behavior going. We got to stop yeah. the but, asshole behavior. That's way think, more important than guy, being consistent. The guy earlier kind of made a good remark on uh, you know I, I think it's personal will pay him because she's a threat. And I mean, I saw a report the other day where, and this is after after the election, there was 92 jokes about her on Letterman. This is after the election. So I mean, it's just personal. She's a, it's not personal. She's an easy target. She gave a lot of comedy fodder. An easy yeah. target. And maybe Letterman does hate her and wants to go after her, but he has the right to do that as the host of his own show. But he's not worried about her as being a player in the Republican Party as as we move forward. I think he is. No. I mean, she's a she's a major player. I mean, she's but. I have not seen anyone fire up the nation the way Dude, she did. Dude, she's, buddy, she she's really not a major player. Nation? Did she really fire up the nation when you really think about it now? After, she's, yes, after after the um, the, what what is it the um the well now I got the, I can't think of the word. She's not a major player. She wasn't even asked to speak at this thing recently, some big Republican event she didn't speak at. McCain wouldn't talk about endorsing her if she was going to run. They asked him recently. He's like, well, whoever the best candidate is. Yeah, he, She's not a major yeah, threat, man. Right. She was she was brought in for the wrong reasons to counterbalance the, the women who were not going to get Hillary right. as their candidate. That's and, all it was. And if you've been watching late night talk shows, every once in a while, somebody comes along that is great comedy fodder for a long time to come. Yeah. And, that, and that's all you think about when you're trying to get yeah. the, the laughs out there. Yeah, the convention is what I was trying to think of. After that, I mean, the, I, there's so I much to saw... joke about with Palin. It's amazing. Yeah, yep. she's not a threat. I don't think Letterman sees her as a threat. Because no one else is really talking about her. So even if he is personal and he doesn't like her, so what? He's allowed to do that. He's the host. Hell yeah. He's Letterman. But, I mean, I know conservatives set themselves up for that. But, I mean, it's, that's life. Everybody's got families. Everybody has daughters, sons. I mean, you can't keep... 
your entire family on a leash. No, no, you're right. You're right. But they do use their families to their advantage, too. You have to realize that if you have a family that's doing this and that, they cart their families out there mm -hmm. because it helps them get the vote. They, it helps with the image. So, you know, their families should also be fathers to be, fathers to be made fun of, too. Yeah. yeah. Right, thank you. And right. you know what? Uh, Anthony is a uh, is a Republican, so yeah. you know, and, and a queer, and, well, right? <laughs> and I I hear your buddy. Uh, well, I, I want to see if this is true. Uh, Sean Hannity says that Letterman should be fired. No, nah, how could Sean that phone say that? call I came in or we're on instant feedback? I, and I, I don't think Hannity. Well, I, I want to see never. if that's true or not. Hannity has Actually, he's never always supporting. endorsed firing right. anybody. That's why I want to see if that was true. Regardless, or not. if it's uh, he. He's for or against whatever they were saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see that. Sean might have said something like, if, if, if he really is making raping 14-year-old girl jokes, he should be fired. He's not. But of course, well, of course he's not. It was so obvious. Let's say hi to uh, Sean in Georgia. Sean. Oh, here he is, Sean. Well, oh. Hey, y'all discussed uh, the whole Patrice thing at the Women's Festival before when Patrice was on the air. It was about three years ago where he was talking about it, and then y'all read an article that that same woman wrote. And oh, really? about it was about the same, and I believe Patrice also didn't get paid for that gig because of the jokes he made. Oh, okay. It's probably a free gig, actually. Mm. Yeah, we'll go back and uh, see if we can find another article on this. Thank you for that, Sean. Uh, let me say, uh, wow, the phones are lit. Tom Chicago. What's up, Tom? Greetings, gentlemen. Hey, Boy. hey Tom. You know, <clears throat> Sarah Palin brought all of this on herself. She jumps into the ring. With a pregnant daughter, it's not like the daughter got knocked up during the whole candidacy. Yeah, it was. It was. She brought it on from day one. Everyone was making their own jokes about it. When she was they asking saw for a it. Huge giant baby blanket covering her pregnant daughter. Mm. You know, so you know everyone was making their own jokes all over the country, and yeah, it's going to linger a long time. It didn't help the Republican cause one iota by bringing her on the ticket. What she's doing is she. I think she knows. That Letterman was not saying your 14 year old daughter got fucked. Once it, it became obvious that he was just referencing the other one, he didn't realize what daughter it was. But like everybody else, she's using this just to springboard and get out a lot of the anger she's had at the other jokes. Right, right. This is just like, it's almost like when you see, your, it's a place for her to get her foot in the door and people to listen to her because she has a justifiable thing like, I didn't like my daughter being made fun of. Mm. So now she's using right. it to get out all her fucking annoyance about all the jokes mm -hmm. and all, all the criticism. Uh, I think the Republican Party should just tell her to shut up and go away for a while because she's still not helping them. <laughs> well, it's it, you know what, though? The, I mean, it's like very rarely... Uh, is somebody under in tremendous hot water for shitting on a Republican? So they probably love it. Of course. Let me mm. go to Chris in PA. He's saying that Hannity did say the call. Oh, maybe he did. Well, uh, Chris, what do you got on Hannity? Yeah, I sent the feedback, and I was watching last night. Now I don't know if that's like a review from the week or whatever, but he did say he thinks Letterman should be fired for what he said, but he knows that he won't be. But he believes he should be. But that goes against everything Sean has said over the he years. He might have said it in a way where it's like, yeah. well, Anything if they that... fired Imus and they fire this, right. then why won't they? You know, then they should fire David Letterman for the. Like I, I can't see but, him actually endorsing the firing of David Letterman. Man, he's disagreed with some of the stuff we've done in the past, but said, look, but those guys shouldn't be fired. He obviously said Imus shouldn't be yeah, fired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were a few others. I think he mentioned the same thing when Jamie Foxx was in trouble. He shouldn't be fired. Mm -hmm. He's probably coming. He's always supporting the non-firing of uh, of, uh, yeah. of broadcasters when they get in trouble. He's probably saying, I just made fun of black girls or black women and got fired. Um, Letterman made fun of a, a white woman or a Republican conservative, and it's acceptable. He's probably looking at it from that point right, of view. Right. Like, why is CBS allowing one but not the other? Mm -hmm. He didn't preface it. He said he thinks that he should be fired. All right, well, didn't I'll have to anything. see that clip, sir. I'd be interested. I'm yep. on his show at the end of the month. I'll, I'll oh, scream well. at him for that <laughs> loudly, standing up with my finger pointed. He likes that. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna, to uh, try to find that clip. Thank you, sir. Any more of these phone calls you want? We can do this for another yeah. hour. Uh, wow. If Palin is the only hope for conservatives, then the party is lost. I, well, I agree with Rick in Nebraska. Not many, not many um, Republicans I, are actually backing her. Yeah, they don't get into her corner. They don't, you know, it's not. She'll fade away. Yeah, she's not one of those Republicans really that people are going, away. yeah, let me get right behind that. And it's not that she's a bad woman. It's just that she kind of brought some of this criticism on herself by taking such a public <sighs> stance and being a moral crusader. Yeah. Jim, what's going on? I'm, I'm just f finishing up. I mean, not, oh. I just want to know how come you guys haven't brought up the fact that the difference between this and the IMA situation is that the media, the comedians, and so forth, 
looked for Palin to say something wrong to cost her the job of vice president. They examined every word she said. Mm -hmm. They looked for anything they could do to make her seem stupid, okay, which I'm not going to say whether that was easy or not, but that cost her her job. When I just made the comment, he wasn't going to cost these girls a basketball career. But when you're a politician and the media believes that it's all right to play dog pile, examine every word you say, and make you look like a fool for it, then how is that not turnabout as fair play? Why is it that Ew. it's all right for them to come out punching on her every second of the day, but when they trip over or they say the wrong thing? I mean, how many times did you hear, I could see uh, uh, Russia from my house, which yeah. is something she never even said. To be honest with you, I, I, I think the main reason is because politicians, what they say, they, they are people that have a tremendous effect on our day-to-day -day life uh, because we're putting them in a position to basically run our lives in a way. Yeah. Whereas, whereas as comedians, entertainers are offering opinions, which even if you're as powerful and, and as respected as Letterman, his opinion is irrelevant. He's just a comedian making fun of something. Yep. He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't. He's not a policy whoa, whoa, whoa. maker. Hold Jim, on, buddy. History, he doesn't make. Proves that that statement's wrong. It's not Obviously, wrong. You could say Saturday Night Live, Letterman, and uh, and and shows of that such had a great great impact. No, they don't. Because they're the ones that formed the general public's opinion of who she was. Well, if and the, the fact that she was the most popular governor. In the last seventy-five years, if dude, that, if hold on, bro, 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 don't, don't, you're not gonna go on a roll back and forth. If if they're that powerful, people, my dislike of Sarah Palin came after I heard her repeatedly giving the same speech. After I heard her not being able to just uh, be on the spot with Katie Couric and sounding like a fucking unprepared idiot, even though Katie Couric is probably biased. Sarah Palin's own words is what made me di like. Eh, I really wouldn't mm. want her as vice president. It wasn't Letterman. I'm a 40 year old man. Letterman doesn't form my opinions. And if your opinions are formed by SNL, then you're a dummy. <laughs> you're a dummy. Uh, I'm not gonna. Letterman like, shouldn't suffer. That, Letterman shouldn't suffer because the people are stupid. Dummies, though, Jim? What's that? Can we agree that we're surrounded by dummies? Yes. It, yeah, but I don't think for other people. That were formed. I, the, the arrogance of people. I don't think for other people. That's not my job. They don't form my opinions, and I take no responsibility for forming theirs. They should laugh at my jokes or not laugh at my jokes. That's it. Mm -hmm. What I do is not important on a, a grand scale. Neither is Letterman. Neither is uh, SNL. It's all entertainment. And if your opinion is formed and you're going to vote... For, for the vice president of this country, based on a sketch you saw or based on what a comedian said, then you're a dumb motherfucker. You're absolutely right, uh, but th this is going on, like Jim is saying, unfortunately. There are a lot of dummies out there that form their opinion in the most ridiculous way. They're ways. the same people that would form their opinions for religious uh, reasons. I mean, right, look, right. There's nothing you can do about it's that. It's happening with Jon Stewart. I mean, people are getting their news from Jon Stewart. They were never supposed to get their news from Jon right. Stewart, but they are now. So, Jim, you think that... Jim? Yes, I'm there. Okay, I mean, I, I just... I, I absolutely think that there is a difference. And the difference is that, A, Palin's family has been open game more than anybody else's family. I mean, you talked about Bush's wife being stabbed for being ugly, but not so openly, you know... Bush, Dude, the Bush you, you daughter, know, the Bush daughter's got... Seen a situation, and, and I think Anthony made the point that you can't... Uh, you can't control every member of your family. I mean, if you look at the Palin situation, she's not a hypocrite. She doesn't believe in abortion and those things, which I don't agree with those. I'm, I'm saying it's, it's, it's the reason why they kept the baby. That's the reason why they're supportive of their daughter. But you haven't seen a situation where it was okay, open season, to go out and attack somebody and their family. Dude, right dude the, the Bush family. daughters were constantly being... Uh, brought into the news and into uh, uh, co comedians' acts and into late-night uh, monologues? Okay. They were constantly being brought in because they were going out and being party girls. Well, they this one was getting knocked up out of wedlock. Out of yeah, it's not the same. What was uh, <laughs> it, it, is saying, it is Jesus the same. Christ. She, it's not like she was this upstanding fucking co college girl that all of a sudden they just started ragging on. The the mother's a conservative Republican, and the girl gets knocked up out of wedlock, which is against this whole family values thing. Uh, they try to shotgun wedding the whole fucking thing, and this asshole that knocked her up wants no part of it. 
They tear down his Facebook site because he's a total asshole on that fucking thing. Uh, it, it was just fodder. And you can't okay. allow, uh, dude, you can't, you're these right. candidates who bring, you're, the, you're, bro, you're bro, 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 right, yeah. you right can't allow the these uh, the families to, all right, you, I'll just talk right over <laughs> you. I'm, I'm trying to talk with you. You can't allow a family to be brought out as a positive thing in a campaign when it makes you look good, but right. then not expect anything your family does to be taken to task when it makes you look bad. I agree. I agree. I'm not saying that, I'm saying you haven't seen that sort of viciousness about somebody's family and and you can't blame sarah for now coming back and saying okay you stuck your foot in my mouth and i have something on you i don't blame okay. sarah for sounding off at all and you know jim whether it's right or wrong and i the, the thing is i'm a long time fan and i agree completely with your opinion on the way things should be okay in terms of that people shouldn't but the fact is if you look at the the election the way things happen they were the election happened because of images, not because of substance. No, and I'm not no. saying I disagree with who got elected, but Obama got elected because he presented a better image. People liked him. No, it was the bad he Bush image. A, yeah, you, I the agree. The bad Bush image got Obama elected. Believe me. Yep. Uh, George Bush being in there for eight years and and the economy taking a shit right at the tail end of that whole thing. I mean, there was so many factors. I don't think it was the way Sarah Palin was presented that completely threw the fucking election, to tell you the truth. Uh, it, it was it was more eight years of, of George Bush and, and the bashing that he, he took. Uh, and you could say the media was responsible for a lot of that. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. I, I think that's what did it. Hey, look, I see Sarah Palin as a, a mom defending her daughter. Of course she's going to get out there and start saying stuff. I don't blame her for that at all. There's a, her daughter. It's a mother. Uh, uh, the kid's fucking getting uh, shit from David Letterman. She's going to jump out. But for her to try to defend it um, uh, on terms of... of them not being in the public eye or that her daughter didn't, you know, kind of do this hypocritical thing as far as this family values type platform that the conservatives are trying to uh, put across. It, it opens okay, them up the for jokes. Teenager, I'll tell you, you know, I'm not talking to any parents. Will be the day that our kids listen to everything we say. You know, that's no, dude. No, no one's saying that yeah, she's a bad mother for that. Can't control. No, not at all. No one's saying she's a bad mother. Yeah, too, and, and we're getting off in a. The direction is what makes it fair for Palin to go after Letterman's job is that Letterman and Stewart and and Saturday Night Live all saw to it that they were going after her job, and that's the difference. We're going after her job so much as going after. They weren't going after her job so much as they were going after uh, the ease uh, that the jokes came with with what she was doing. And, and you're. Uh, it, there was a it was a published quote from uh, Tina Fey. The Baldwin. And no. I believe it was from Baldwin who was involved with it because he didn't want to that no matter what. They have to make sure that oh. uh, that she does not get elected. But dude, even if even if they were and they were trying to affect her job, the difference between comedians and performers trying to affect somebody's job is different because comedians and performers are not policy makers. Right. Even if they do affect opinion, okay? I don't think they affect it to the point where you're going to vote a certain way. But even if they can sway someone's opinion a little bit, they do not sit in Congress or the House of Representatives or the Senate. They they don't vote on laws and, and on what to do. And they don't vote to send troops overseas or to bring them home. They don't have that kind of power. So when you're a politician and people are going after your job, it's because your job directly affects the future of the country. Letterman saying whatever he wants does not at all affect the future of the country. But every politician that gets voted into that position has those powers and abilities. Right. All right. So when you paint someone as an idiot when, you know... You have to admit she looked like one. And, and you said that when she spoke to Kurt, the problem was that she was under... The problem was that she was overprepared because there were too many uh, Republicans around her telling exactly what she should say every minute, and I think that's why we heard the same thing. Dude, can you imagine uh, Bill Clinton look... Dude, can, can, you, can you imagine... Bill Clinton looking that ridiculous talking to a reporter. Not that he hasn't had bad moments, 
But can you imagine sitting Clinton down as, as, the, as, as the guy who you want to, to run the country and saying something to him and having him look that ridiculously ill-informed? Yeah. I think that was a moment of being overwhelmed and not having that answer. She, and I think she just that wasn't, was, uh, uh, she, she just, had to toe the, the line and say, she just wasn't ready. Man. That we have she wasn't ready for the I mean, position that, that, that she was put uh, in. I agree. From, hey, Jim, you got to wrap up. Let me we, bring we, up, we gave you like 20, I don't know, 15 yeah, minutes. On let, the me, phone. Let, let me bring up a point here. Also, do you think that the media had something to do with, um, George, uh, uh Bush senior not getting elected because they, goofed on Dan Quayle relentlessly. Do you recall sure. the the beating that Dan Quayle took for being a complete fucking moron? Absolutely. And so do you think that you could blame Dan Quayle if he found a situation that somebody put their foot in their mouth and he got to to say, you see what it feels like? Uh, no, I'm just saying the guy... And the, it can end your career. The guy was an I idiot. That's a perfect example. He was an idiot. Yeah, so, and they pointed it out. And it wasn't even the media that cost him his job, dude. It was George Bush hey. Sr. ran a terrible campaign, yeah, yeah. and right. Ross Perot hurt Bush Sr. It's like you're blaming the media as a knee-jerk reaction, and they do stink. But Perot got, I think it was 17% of the vote. Bill Clinton got I like 43%. the real impact. All right, Jim, thank you. we got to move on. Everyone else wants in here. Right. Uh, just so we have all the facts out there, Hannity is not calling for Letterman to be fired. He is just pissed off at the hypocrisy. Yeah, that's what sort I figured. Sort of what figured. we uh, figured, right? Yeah. All right, let me, uh, let me go to Lee in New Hampshire. we got to make it quick here. Lee, go ahead. Hey, um, as pointed out, that this has always been one-sided, that the... Democrats always get by, and the Republican people always get bashed. Um, so that's Ant's been uh, on that before. I also wanted to point out to Jimmy well, that he was wrong, that he made a comment that somebody got a bad blowjob. I didn't think there was anything but a good blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Lee. Speaking of uh, the Democrats' kids, Chelsea Clinton, hello. Yeah, I'm sorry. They beat they beat the shit out of her in the media. They they were never I, they were never they never attacked Chelsea like they like they would make fun of her being ugly. There was that's one saying, one that's ugly joke bad. came out. I forgot who made it, but somebody I made an Rush, ugly joke. Rush Limbaugh, and, right? And they jumped on him, and that was it. Because you're talking about at the time, an 11 year old girl going through a very funny, fucking awkward stage, popped in the public eye, and not in a way where she's older and is helping with the campaign or anything. Right. She's just some dopey little kid uh, going in there. So, yeah, that kind of is not off limits, mind mm -hmm. you, but when you sit there, you don't want to be like, oh, yeah, that kid's ugly, that kid's ugly, uh, you know. I mean, it probably fucked the kid up. But, uh, you know, but but it, it was like once she started getting a little older and then getting involved in uh, uh, her mom's campaign and, and shit like that, then it's fair game. But media matters, Ooh. who are the ones who always go after O'Reilly and who are the ones who, uh, who went after Imus. I mean, they really are pukey and biased. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, they would never go uh, yeah. after liberal. We've nope. been going back and forth with the Hannity thing. This is exactly what he said. Biting. Well, what was she scrutiny. supposed to do? Just separate them and not bring her family to the no, convention when she's I being think. nominated for vice president? I would just, I, look, I would have kept it private. It's our business. And keep your daughter hidden. I hidden. I didn't say hide her, but I, there's a difference between hide well, and center stage think, at the major, major national what, political convention. I think David Letterman's a disgrace. I, I think agree. CBS ought to, ought to fire him for this. They never will. Too much money. How are you saying that Letterman's a disgrace? And ought to be fired. What? Never will. Too much money. Get him on the what's phone. Up? What's he, insane? Can we get Sean Hannity on the phone? A disgrace? He's going that far with this? And why is it A-Rod uh, yelling and screaming that uh, he's being accused of being a pedophile, by the way? Because he probably <laughs> understood that Letterman was talking about the 18-year-old. Yeah. That was all over the news for being pregnant. Is he dating her now? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> wow, how are you saying a disgrace? A disgrace. It should be he fired. Could call, he could call him a disgrace, but the whole firing thing is a little woo, woo. David Letterman had to apologize. I, uh, I'm a fan of David Letterman, and uh, this whole thing sickens me. To be completely honest, with because he apologized doesn't mean to apologize, but had to apologize uh, to pretty much save his gig. I'm thinking at this point. Yeah, so then Sarah running. Palin now accepts a fake apology. This is the country we live in. Yeah. We, we've had to apologize a bunch of times on our show. We could speak for ourselves. We never mean it. We don't mean it. You get It gets to a point where you're forced <laughs> to apologize for something. Usually it's written for you. And then you read it. You don't mean it. And don't then everything it. goes away because people start to accept your fake apology. It's such a weird environment we live in. Yep. You get your fake apology out there. Uh, you, you don't mean it. 
And then people go, okay, they apologize. And that, to them, is better than just saying nothing mm -hmm. and going, all right, just let's move on with this. I'm not going to apologize because I don't really mean it. Uh, I shouldn't have to apologize. Uh, whatever it is. But, yeah, they'd rather just hear a fake apology that they're doing just to keep their jobs. Right. Do you, pretty much it. We don't know Letterman, obviously. Do you no. think he, he, he means it when he says he's sorry and all that? No, I think there was a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that of took course. place there. Man, because uh, uh, what, Les Moonves got contacted by... Yeah, some uh, Republican in New York. Oof, yeah, that that's... He, what does that mean? They're going to, like, pump up their protesting? It's, no, 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 this is before... I, personally, I think he means it because I, they're so strict over there about that stuff. And Eddie Brill always said it comes from Dave. He doesn't like... Really? He, and I'm not... I'm being really honest with you, man. Eddie says it, it comes... Like, any type of jokes about underage shit, he doesn't like. Oh, yeah, that's why... So I think that his apology... I think he realizes he just didn't know that, that that young girl was there. He fucked up. It was like a comic. You put your foot in your mouth. It happens. He, mm. But he told the joke the next day. I mean, you know. Yeah, he, he, again. He right. was all in with the joke and, and what it meant and, you know, and assumed that everyone else thought, you know, the same way that he it was, did. Right, that it was cool. But, it's a joke. People get it. But it's just scary because now... Now comedy is going to be toned down even a little more now. Every time we lose one of these battles, yep. you'll see. You'll see the end result. You get, you get, get more scared. You get more happens. fun Eddie Murphy movies that suck at the box yeah. office. People get scared to do anything edgy, uh, to uh, offend people that are you know in the public eye or whatever. And I understand it's the daughter, but he, he meant the older daughter. I don't know how that... 14 year old daughter ever got into the mix that where people thought Dave was uh, talking about because her. because she was in New York with Sarah Palin and the oh. and the daughter that does have a kid oh was that was the problem home. she was yeah, at the yeah, game yeah, with yeah. Him. who even fucking knew that right who knew who was where we just knew that the one daughter had the kid well, and and that's the well when deal. you hear Sarah Palin's box of tissue when you hear that he Sarah Palin's right. coming to New York you you just like everything is you know everything's on the table to make yeah. to make fun of. The initial, you're, not, you're not thinking who is actually in town. No. To Palin, it probably sounded like he was implying that her other daughter got knocked up. Like, when you first right. hear that, it probably was like... Yeah, but then David explained that. Yeah. His 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 screw-up was that he was, you know, he's a, he's a comedian. He's, he was annoyed the next night that it got misinterpreted. And he was kind of sarcastic in his apology. Which he should have. But I think that's what... That's, what, that's how it should work in this country. You know? That's how it should work. David tell, says a joke. Some people didn't like it. They express their opinion. They don't like the joke. David then goes on the air and explains the joke to maybe calm them down a little bit. That's not good enough. So they no. start, like, they're protesting and they start gathering. And then they, they put pressure on the person to now issue a fake apology. There's something really wrong with that in this country. Yep. It, a lot uh, of it doesn't want to apologize. No, no one wants to apologize. And then, and then, they, accept, silly. And then they accept the fake apology. You look silly when you apologize in public. <laughs> Only I don't blame Sarah Palin for being it. mad because he's right. going after his daughters in one way or another. I understand all that. Yeah. And she expressed all that. Trust me, she got a lot of air time. But she and, then Letterman, it, and then Letterman explains, well, I wasn't talking about your 14-year-old daughter. I was talking yeah. about the 18-year-old daughter that was knocked up a little, a little early in life. She really has to just pretty much go back to uh, Alaska, keep her yap shut, do her term. And then whatever the hell else she wants to, you know, do after that. But uh, as far as being in the national spotlight, like she was during that uh, presidential mm -hmm. election, just just go away, please. I will never vote Republican if she's uh, involved. Oh, she won't be. No, she, I know. She was the death knell for uh, the Republican Party as I, far as uh, this election went. I think I'm. I think I'm ready to to vote for a young Republican. A young Republican. Absolutely. A little more moderate, not uh, such oh, a yeah, religious of not. zealot. Of course not. I mean, some things, yeah, yeah. Some other things have to be in there, but I, I have an open mind, and I would vote young Republican if the, if it was the right person. Yeah. If Sarah Palin's involved, though, hell fucking no. no. She's a joke. No. So here's uh, David Letterman last night, I guess. We got the whole thing. All right, here... Um I, I've been uh, thinking about this uh, situation uh, with uh, Governor Palin and her family now for about a week. It was a week ago tonight, and uh, maybe you know about it, maybe you don't know about it, but there was a uh, joke that I told, and uh, I thought I was telling it about uh, the, the older uh, daughter uh, being at, at Yankee Stadium. And it was, uh, it was kind of a coarse joke. There's no getting around it. But I, I never thought it was any 
anybody other than the the older daughter and before the show I checked to make sure in fact that she is of uh, legal age 18 yeah but the the joke really which by the way goes with uh, what Jimmy was saying yesterday you know making sure that the that the daughter was of legal age right and then Jimmy had a problem with one of his jokes and they wanted Jimmy to pump it up to make sure the person he was talking about was of legal age. Yeah, that was just it was just because there's that's exactly what you said yesterday. Eddie so. Brill said that there was there was the thing with that is like a sticking point for Letterman, and he also doesn't like disease, like certain disease jokes, like he doesn't like when you shit on cancer or any, like even like the AIDS we know you can't do, but even like leukemia, he just that's there's a couple right. of things that are for him are just personally he doesn't like them, and those are two of the mm -hmm. ones that Eddie Brill has been saying that for years. He just doesn't like stuff like that. Mm. 18. Hmm. Yeah. But the, the joke really, in and of itself, can't, can't be defended. Uh, the next day, people are, are outraged. They're angry at me because they said, how could you make a lousy joke like that about the 14-year-old the girl who was at the ball game? And I had honestly no idea that the 14-year-old girl, I had no idea that anybody was at the ball game except the governor, and I was told at the time that she was there with uh, Rudy uh, Giuliani. <laughs> And that's right. And I really should have made the joke about Rudy. <laughs> because <laughs> but I didn't. And now people are getting uh, angry and, and they're saying, well, how can you uh, say uh, something like that about a 14-year-old a, a girl? And, and uh, what, does that make you uh, feel good to, to make these uh, uh, horrible uh, jokes about a kid who's completely innocent, minding her own business? A and turns out she was at the ball game. I had no idea she was there. So she's now uh, at the ball game, and people think that I made the joke uh, ab about her. And, uh, but still, I'm, I'm wondering, well, what can I do to help people understand that I would never make a joke like this. I've never made jokes like this as long as we've been on the air. Thir 30 long years, and, and you can't really be doing jokes like that. And I understand, of course, why people are upset. I would be upset myself. And then I was watching the uh, uh, Jim Lehrer News Hour, and this uh, commentator, the uh, columnist uh, Mark the Shields, is oh, talking Lehrer. about how I had made this indefensible <laughs> joke about the 14-year-old girl. And I thought, oh, boy. Uh, now I'm beginning to understand what the problem is here. It's the perception rather than the intent. It doesn't make any difference what my intent was. It's the perception. And as they say about jokes, that if you have to explain the joke, hmm. it's not a very good joke. And I'm certainly... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well... My responsibility, I take full blame for that. I told a bad joke. I told a joke that was beyond uh, flawed, and my intent uh, is completely meaningless uh, compared to, to the perception. And, and since it was a joke I told, I feel that I need to do the right thing here and apologize for having told that joke. It's not your fault that it was misunderstood. It's my fault that it was misunderstood. Thank you. So I, I, I would like to apologize, uh, especially to the two daughters I involved, uh, Bristol and uh, Willow, and also to the governor and her family and everybody else uh, who was outraged uh, by the joke. Uh, I'm sorry about it, and I'll try to do better in the future. Thank you very much. And uh, told Mo haircut. <laughs> Yeah. I love I love how he talks to his audience. Yeah, when he when he yeah. just sits down and talks to them, it's 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 it's, it's all down home, isn't it? It really is, man. It's he doesn't down do it, home. He doesn't do it often. He did a lot of that after nine eleven. But it's very when, Andy Griffith, right? When he sits down and goes, look, you know, he really knows how to talk to his own audience Here's when he needs deal. to. Right? Yeah. Here's yep. the deal, and he explained it perfectly. You know, I think he still had to do what he had to do, to be honest with you. But uh, he saved face with that. He did it. It was an it was an apology, but he definitely came off um, better than ninety nine percent of the people that apologize in public. Yeah, I uh, agree. Like it was on it was it was on his terms. It was in his forum mm -hmm. in front of his audience, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. It's not like through a press release um, d uh, d at a a press conference, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. It's on his show, like you said. He's talking to his audience, so it's almost like family. You're just kind of shooting right. the shit, 
and then you wind up apologizing, and people applaud, and and it's over. And, and he gets to explain the whole thing, right, from right, from the beginning to That's the end. That's the most like, important thing. Like when we had a fake apologize uh, over the homeless Charlie thing. Here's it, your apology. It's written down for you. Just say this. Don't elaborate. Oh, thanks. Right. I think we could fucking ha handle an apology by ourselves. If you want to keep your jobs, you will read exactly what we wrote for you. These two sentences, no yeah. more, no less. Yeah. And we want it right at, what time was it at? Like 9, 10? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be said at exactly 9, 10. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, uh, it's just amazing. When you're trying to entertain people, a lot of this stuff is off the cuff. Right. You're going to fuck up. You're going to, yeah, and eventually then, you're going to say something that's going to anger somebody a little more than just them going, oh, well, that sucks. They're going to make a stink of it, and you're going to have to uh, uh, say something. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to say it on other people's terms and in a way that isn't you. That's another thing. When you're reading someone else's words that are supposed to be your apology, it's not sincere. No, of course not. We read other people's words how as many, far as apologies. How many times? Go. I can't even oh, count that high Here's your anymore. apology. You're very sorry. Here it is. Oh, am I? <laughs> Let me read how sorry I am, what I'm sorry about. Can you at least spell my name right? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I, Greg Hudges. No, no, that's not how I spell Hughes, you idiots. Hudges. <laughs> <laughs> dopes. That was a good three and a half minutes from Letterman right there. Yep. Yeah, I, it was very I, cool. You know, I think he saves face with the uh, the fake apology. And then the fake apology is accepted uh, by Sarah Palin, mm -hmm. which proves that she's just as dumb as they come. But she knows, she knows this stuff, that it's a fake apology. But you know who did well, not just fine, accept? Because she'll at least go away for a while. You know who did not accept fake apology? Who? FireDavidLetterman.com. You mean our message board? Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's we, pretty much. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it? I have no idea. Yeah. Our pest pretty much took over. Fire David Letterman. <laughs> They're making fun of it. Oh, I hope David Letterman appreciates it. They are actually uh, uh, having David some kind Letterman. of rally at four thirty in front of the Ed Sullivan Theater. Really? Um, and you know something? I would just hope. That anti uh, uh, demonstrators w would show up in greater numbers than these idiots, because now Dave's apologized. They said uh, their their official official uh, uh, statement is they don't accept it. It's not enough. Well, pa the thing is that Palin did accept it, which I, it kind of makes me like her a little bit. Like she didn't try to milk it for more. She said that she accepted. It. That was a, the first sincere apology he offered, and she accepted it. Well, I think that, that's enough. But, you know, he said he was sorry, and she accepted right. it, and that's fine. But now she'll accept a, uh, an appearance on David Letterman. That's happening. You, oh, yeah, yeah. Within yeah, a week the, or two. The line, and then be there'll there. be there, now Dave. Because <laughs> they'll try to get a little edgy, and, and she'll yeah. be like, Dave. Uh, well, ha, <laughs> ha. So you've been to the ball game? Yeah. Uh, oh, Dave. Everyone will, everyone will laugh and applaud. <laughs> right. What do you think? What do you think the odds are she goes on the show? Zero. <laughs> Zero. Zero. Oh. Palin wants nothing. To, I'll tell you why. Because it was about her daughter. If it was about her yeah, or her husband, point. then they could have done that. Like if it was about him and her having sex. Yeah. Was, yeah. You're 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 right, uh, Jimmy. I, I think that she'll just completely. And he probably doesn't want it because that could only be. I mean, he would have her, but that could only be a bed. There's no way that could be a great situation. No, for him. no. She would just berate him, and he would have to just take it. No, he would just sucks. take it. Yeah. Oh, yes. He's pretty caustic. He doesn't like to take shit from people. No, no, no he doesn't. And he would have to. That's oh. true. Oh, he can't just disappear after the show like he does. He'd have to sit there and shake her hand. Oh, and, you know, I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, he does like the vamoose after the show. Oh, he certainly does. <laughs> it's the old catacombs under the Ed Sullivan Theater. Just, but that is all he is when you think about it. Is like he's just a nutty comic. Like yeah. as much as we look at him, like he's this. Tall show ho he's just a comedian who yeah, just, he's a you, comic. Know, you mm -hmm. say dumb shit sometimes yeah what that's it oh you should have uh maybe sam could get it i mean listening to Eliz elizabeth hasselbeck uh, try to discuss the letterman situation on the uh, view oh uh, she's a, an embarrassment to young women everywhere man an embarrassment yeah. and once again Whoopi goldberg and joy behar uh, how to you know set her straight? Who I can't stand uh, their whole uh, stance well, on everything. Whoopi. Sure, I'm not even. I'm yeah. I, well, it was more about what comedy is and what a public commentator is and basic shit. They were they they were explaining to her. Yeah, Whoopi's whole uh, uh, political agenda is just ugh. Another one that's just ugh. Shut up. But Hasselbeck, yeah, she uh, 
She goes off and starts crying about oh, crap. She's the it's worst. Just real she is a complete. It is embarrassing. She is the worst. But that's the conservative voice they have. Like that's that's why so many people hate Ann Coulter's guts. But that's the alternate to another a voice quote that's kind of on the conservative vibe a little bit. Yeah. Like you know, because Whoopi's very liberal and Joy is very liberal, and they're both smart and they're funny. Mm -hmm. And this is the counterbalance to that is fucking stupid Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Yeah. Can, can, that's, but they hate Ann Coulter because she's not some dummy I'm, who sits there. I'm not a fan of Coulter, but I respect her because she's very, very intelligent and knows what she's talking about, and she can hang in yeah, there with yeah. the best of them. And she's sarcastic Elizabeth and Elizabeth yeah. Hasselbeck, which is in that same genre, is someone that reads a few things on the internet or might read one of the political books uh, from Barnes & Noble and then thinks she knows everything about politics. Yeah, she doesn't have. A, and, I don't think she has an original thought in her head when it comes to that stuff. No, no. And Coulter it, certainly does. And Coulter can get in there, yeah, and just swing with the best of them. Uh, there's no one, no one's getting one over on Ann Coulter without her fighting. Uh, she's not going to sit there and start crying her eyes out right. when she reaches uh, that dead end. You know, right? You reach that dead end and go, uh oh, I I don't know about this, <laughs> and I'm being called out. <laughs> And then you got to nuzzle into Barbara Walters' old, old uh, fucking boobs. Oh, God. Her old warm boobs for comfort. That freckled cleavage. Ugh. Liver spots. <laughs> Do you watch The View? Uh, no. I watch to get pissed off. Really? you got to watch The View, I'm telling you. And I know there's some uh, guys out there that'll back me up. It's an it's amazing yeah, TV. They'll back you up, all right, if you're watching The View. <laughs> uh, uh, why not, why not, why not? I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that. you you yeah. got to watch. No, I've, se I've then, seen it. Then I've Sherry Shepard is as dumb as they come. Yeah, Dave's apology on TV, by oh, the way. Oh, it's everywhere. It's going to be everywhere today. I would love to know what the ratings are going to be Ooh. for Letterman the last week or so. Big. Uh, let me say hi to Tony in Connecticut. Tony. Tony. Good morning, boys. Happy birthday, Jimmy. Hey, buddy. Hey, Goomba. Hey, Anthony. What's up, man? I, wanted, you know, I remember that morning that you did the apology. Yeah. And I just wanted to say I loved at the end when you did that little thing with your tongue there, that little like sucking up noise that <laughs> did I click did I click my tongue? Well, even <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it was so Ugh. funny. Even better was the crumbling up of the apology. Oh, you heard it <laughs> yeah, being crumbled and thrown in the garbage. And then where it possibly belongs. some spitting after that. <laughs> oh, boy. They spit on their own floor. <laughs> but you know what? Our fake apology uh, allowed us to continue doing our radio show. That's it. And That's I'm so glad line. that we're finally talking about the fake apology. Yeah. Because for so long, we're like, I can't believe we're being forced to do this. We can't say what this really is. And one day, we just decided, you know what? No, this is what it is. It's a fake it apology to, to get us to continue doing our radio and, show. And, and to get it out there so the listeners know that if we ever have to apologize... It's a fake apology. <laughs> oh, and then they'll come to us down the hall and go, look, I know you guys talk about how it's a fake apology, but you, you please. you got to make this sound sincere. This is a real apology. Like, right. And don't, sure. like, a month later say it was a fake apology, okay? It's like, yeah, we got you. The don't whole worry. thing We're is a it. joke, man. Man! <laughs> <laughs> You're not sorry, man. Yeah. Of course not. Here's uh, Gene on Long Island. Hey, what's hey, going Gene. on, guys? Hey. Hello. Hey, I want to see Letterman do a top ten uh, list of things that would not offend anyone in the world. Just do the top ten list and not say a word. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea because we're running out of things to make fun of. All right, boys, punching out. Which is so cool, weird. man. Isn't that what comedy is pretty much based on? Yes. Just making fun of everything? But now you, you really can't. And someone is saying now it's about time that uh, Letterman goes after the uh, current administration. Does he do Obama jokes I on the show? I honestly don't know. I don't think he does. I don't. I haven't heard anyone doing real critical of Obama jokes. I, I've heard them joke about him in certain ways, and you know, but not what a cheap, what a terrible present giver he is. Yes, some guys yes. have joked about that. Something mm. like that. <laughs> His wife's eyes being a little buggy. Right. Some comics have exactly. addressed that. Here's a question: As far as uh, late night uh, comedians go, okay. You throw John Stewart in there, obviously. Now, when did it become where where if you're more of a Democratic comedian, you only make fun of the Republicans and and vice versa? Like yes. did like did Johnny? Co Let's start with Leno. Did Leno make fun of the Democrats and the Republicans equally? I'm gonna guess he did. Because wow, you know something? I think you're right. Depending on who was president, that was your fair game, and and they had been through so many presidents. 
those long term. I just uh, remember growing up, if. Reagan's in office, you beat the shit out of Reagan right. if you're a comedian. If Carter's in office, you just beat the sure. shit. But something changed, and it seems like only in the last couple of years, literally, mm-hmm. where you you pick a party for the most part, and you go after the other party with your jokes, and maybe every once in a while you make fun of your own. But yeah. there's almost like there's almost like an agenda. Clinton was fair game for everybody. And Bush was fair game. Well, that's what I'm trying to. Uh, that's the question though. When did it start changing? Did John Stewart change that? No, I think I think Stewart would have been. I, I I think I think with Obama, he hasn't done anything yet, which he will. For them, I think Biden is the way they're starting to hit Obama through Biden's ah, fuck up. Like such a cop out, though. Why? Because he's the old white guy. No, no, just because he's giving them reason to a saying like yeah, really yeah. ridiculous things. Yeah, he's given. Uh, he's I, got some. But I, no I think they'll get to Obama. No one's mm-hmm. commenting on on wishy washy Obama. Yeah, that's true. I mean, get on there and 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 talk about wishy washy Obama. Did you hear a statement on uh, Ahmadinejad? Mm-mm. It's like it was so carefully worded. Everything's carefully and, and, worded and, and, in and written out and everything. He couldn't just speak with a little bit of passion and like that's a situation where somebody like I'll ah, bring him up, old Ronnie Reagan would have gotten on there and poop boom shot from the hip. That was old Ronnie Reagan style, whether it was you know written by a speechwriter or not. The guy you know knew how to deliver that stuff, and then he'd throw a few. Of his own little yes, will right. things in there, and <laughs> who's the, who's the last uh, president that improvised? Bush didn't improvise. Obama's not improvising. Clinton was good at that. Clinton, Clinton kind of. Clinton would throw. I think sure. Clinton jump at reporters and, and give them sincere answers that weren't rehearsed or written down or anything like that. And uh, you know, you had to respect him for that. Mm-hmm. And you know the cigar thing. Yeah, of course, <laughs> gotta got respect him. He's on the phone with foreign leaders, getting his dick sucked with bentos. <laughs> he not the, the, the history should prove that he was a real trooper and a good boy. <laughs> yes, Arafat's waiting outside, oh. and he's just getting a blowjob. <laughs> Fantastic! The entire world peace is in the balance. <laughs> yeah, and he's getting his fucking <laughs> fat yeah. southern hog sucked. How do you get off in that? How do you hold a rod when Arafat's waiting outside for you? Dude, my, my nubby dick is soft <laughs> if the phone rings. <laughs> if, if I hear like if I uh, if I hear the fucking theme music from a show I like from the other room, my yeah. dick shrinks. Like what? What is, is that? Mash? Oh, I'm concentrating too hard on something on TV. It's uh, like I got world leaders outside. This this war in the balance. <laughs> Suck my dick. Talk about oh, a right. power trip, though. That's fucking complete power. Oh hell yeah, Danny. Come look on. at the feedback. Uh, Miley Cyrus blowjob pics. I can't say the website yet. No Cause, cause, way. Well, we'll find out in a second. In Bra- hell, Brad in Atlanta. Brad. Good morning, boys. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Just calling in to say, man. It's the same in every facet of life. I'm a, a camera operator and a part-time bartender. And people nowadays are getting so weirded out and pissed off about the littlest shit. You can't make a joke without somebody looking at you and, you know, calling you a cunt bag, essentially. If you just, you know, make the littlest comment. It's really? Up. Brad? Yes, sir. Why don't you just put your hand in the register over there, Brad? <laughs> Give me my money back. <laughs> Brad. <laughs> Not the best I joke I ever heard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, is a bartender... As a bartender, you got to be careful about uh, how you're shooting the shit with the with your patrons. Yeah, man, because it's, it's all about tips, you know. And nowadays, people they're you know they're, they're fucking stay at homers. They're not going out and fucking blowing money like yeah, they used true. to. So if you make a little of, you know bullshit comment, they're going to totally eat your lunch if they don't like the way you fucking see the world. People are so sensitive and overblown about the littlest shit. It's just fucking retarded. But I love you, and I'm glad you're here. All right. Fucking out. <laughs> Hey, uh, just handed this. Uh, this just in? Yeah, Leno told similar joke about Palin's daughter. Oh, yeah? Governor Palin announced over the weekend that her 17-year-old unmarried daughter is five months pregnant. And you thought John Edwards was in trouble before. Now he has really done it. That was, yeah, that's, t- that's totally different, though. Yeah, that is. That's the, uh, that's the older daughter, obviously, the pregnant one. Underage. What? 17. Ah, pregnant. Yeah, but he's also, he's playing off the fact that uh, Palin announced that her daughter was pregnant. Yeah. He didn't just throw her in out of nowhere. Like, this is probably why he didn't get in trouble. He more just tied Edwards into a story. Like, people, I think, understood the tone that was coming from. Yeah. I'm guessing. Uh, what, Danny? Th- this is nothing new. I mean, there was an article I saw yesterday called uh, 10 Reasons Why uh, Sarah Palin's Outrage is Misplaced and Late. Yeah. Because this is all, all these jokes, uh, and far worse than this joke, has happened before. Yeah, that's true. So why is she so outraged about it now? 
I mean, there was a bit on Saturday Night Live that suggested there was uh, incest going on in the family. Uh, there have been very similar jokes about Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, why why is Letterman mm -hmm. the uh, you know the scapegoat for all this? Because because he's the scapegoat. He it's Craig our Ferguson. sick society. I think if the older daughter was actually in town instead of the younger daughter, then it would have been a whole different. Story, I agree. Unfortunately, but even they, though I still believe Letterman was still going after the older daughter. Sure, he was. You know. I, I believe what he said. I honestly believe he didn't know the 14-year-old was there. Because yeah. there's a lot of ways to, to shit on Sarah Palin but he doesn't without need, doing that. But he doesn't need to know who's actually in town for the joke he wanted to, to say. No, no. The, the, the details. It's like everybody knew what he meant. Just stop. They knew they, 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 that he meant the older daughter that got in a little bit of trouble there with the out-of-wedlock pregnancy during a, a, a pretty conservative run that uh, Mommy was making. So... You know, that's where the goofing came from. Didn't the, the no one was goofing on a 14-year-old ever. The Republicans didn't look at her resume, man. <laughs> that, that goes against the party line it's a little zoics. bit. Zoics. <laughs> yeah, that's... Just a little bit. Yeah. And the Leno joke, this is from the Huffington Post. Yeah. Huffington. Here's, <laughs> here's where it's different. Harumph. Is uh, I think that the, 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 the joke here is being pointed at Edwards, not the uh, the daughter. Because the joke was, Governor, I mean, I'm just rereading it, but Governor Palin announced over the weekend that her 17-year-old unmarried daughter is five months pregnant. And you thought John Edwards was in trouble before. Now he's really done it. He's pointing the joke, making fun of Edwards. That's true, yeah, yeah. And not the yeah, daughter. different. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Hello, fellas. How hey. are you doing today? Hi. All right. I just, well, I'm disappointed in David Letterman. Uh, the first day he came out and he, you know, he tried to do a little explanation about, you know, uh, and it sounded like he wasn't going to apologize. He was going to stand his ground, you know. And why? I don't see why he just didn't, you know, come out and just say, "Go fuck yourself." Yeah, dude, you're, you're well, being he, naive, dude. You can't yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. You're wrong. Unfortunately, the climate really sucks, and you just can't do that anymore. He did do that the next day. Pretty much was like, you know, tough shit. And what you're, what you're thinking. This is what I meant, and that's it. But unfortunately, that wasn't it, and the pressure was uh, was uh, building. And it would have led to his firing, unfortunately. So then you have to go with the fake apology, and then the person accepts the fake apology, and then we move on. And, dude, there are times in life where you're not a sellout if you say you're sorry. Like th He just fucked up. He didn't realize something. It, it, it's being perceived, like he said, as what it's being perceived as. And if you if you hate Palin and you want to make fun of her, that's fine. But when you do a joke about fucking her daughter, and she happens to be with her 14-year-old daughter, or, or A-Rod mm -hmm. fucking her daughter, you know what? Hey, look, you got to step out and go, sorry, I real, for real didn't realize that. And you got to give a real apology and move on. It doesn't mean you're a sellout, but what was he supposed to do? Why would he say go fuck off when he gave her a justifiable reason to be pissed off? Right. Mm -hmm. no, 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 I guess you got a point there, but I yeah. thought he was going to hold his ground. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm punching out. God. We got a lot of new audio. We should wrap up the whole uh, David Letterman thing. He apologized. I think, I, I think he saved face. I wish he didn't have to apologize, but this in this day and age, you got to apologize if you want to keep your job. Yeah, That's it was smart. It. it was a smart move. We all understand that. Jamie Let Fox said he was sorry and it went away. Like it's it's smart sometimes to you say you're sorry. He wasn't sorry either. Probably not. No, these sorry. Sorry. These are fake apologies. Oh, rich. Hi. I'm not talking for Letterman. I just assume it. It's got to be another fake apology because that's what uh, they demand out there. Yep. They demand an apology, so you come up with a fake apology, and then the, the person accepts the fake apology, like Sarah Palin did. She and bought sincere's it. Sincere's fine. She bought it hook, line, and sinker, the fake apology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. Insincerity is fine as long as uh, you say it. It yep. doesn't right. matter if you mean it or not. Even if you make a mistake. David Letterman addresses the Fire Letterman rally outside his studio. So yesterday, I guess, was the last day with the Sarah Palin yeah. controversy, yeah, right? Yeah. And Letterman had some fun with it. People outside his studio trying to get him fired. And all these people, by the way, saying, you, you know, these lawyers go, don't talk about it, like when something like this is happening. And Letterman was smart, man. He was smart. Oh, very nice of you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Late Show, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when I call your name, please come forward and pick up your apology. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I, I want, I want to get through this as quickly as possible so you folks can get to the Fire Dave rally. Uh, wow. It's...
It's nice that people hate me who are no longer just part of my immediate family. You know, it's, it's, I feel... My, my son, you know, he, uh, he's, he's telling everybody at school that his father is Conan. I... How does that make me... Yeah, there's a Fire Dave rally going on outside, but I, but I think it's just about over because the last time I looked, they were uh, breaking up and heading to Flash Dancers. So I think <laughs> it's going to be all right. You can hear the excitement in Letterman's voice. Oh, Th this he was, loves it. This yep. was good for business. Yeah. Uh, do, do we have the ratings yet? As far as the Sarah Palin controversy no. goes, it was great He's for the show. He's a hit. Can I, can I be honest with you? Anyone here... Anything from Conan in the last week? It's Amazing. all been Letterman and Sarah Palin. It's a, yeah. I don't they, they didn't plan it, but it worked out well. Like God damn, is that he hijacked Conan's like second week of the Tonight Show? Amazing, and publicity wise, and and he, he he looks good. Letterman looks good, even though he had to apologize, right? I don't yeah. think he looked bad apologizing at all. He look bad. Wait, wait, Legitimately, no. she was fourteen, and she was even though we know he didn't mean it. That doesn't he, sound good. <laughs> She was 14. He didn't mean it. No, no, but you, you, Roman Polanski. You know he didn't mean to say that. But there are times, yeah. I, I said this on Red Eye last night, brilliantly. But no, sometimes it's, it's like there are times in life where you're apologizing. And it doesn't mean you're a groveling worm. Yeah, it's okay to say you're sorry once in a while. Especially comparing Red Eye at uh, 4 in the morning to Letterman. But what I want to know well, is. Well, I really wasn't. I was just kind of kidding. And the word what especially, there's no X in it. Oh, the what Norton I, clip. No, there's About no Anthony. X in especially. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, now is into uh, women's rights again. For the last ten years, they've only been a uh, you know political activist, and now all of a sudden they're jumping on board. Where were they when Letterman was trashing Hillary Clinton throughout the last year or so, or 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 Leno or any? So do you of have them, that clip from last night? <laughs> well, isn't that a, a, a isn't that a, a, I can't, I a can't, good point? I, I can't no. be involved with you. It's not. Why isn't it I a quit. good point? Because now you're giving now too much credit. They're like any other special interest group. Yeah. You can't look for consistency in a special interest group. They're shitty. Right. They have good points and they do good things. And, and the majority of their stuff is just getting themselves in the spotlight. So they're not irrelevant. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's focus on the good news. Is and the good news is Sarah Palin has accepted my apology. So that's. She also accepted a $500 gift certificate from LensCrafters. I thought that was a nice touch. <laughs> and I, I tell you, to be honest, I was quite nervous about this whole thing, and I was really nervous about uh, an apology to Sarah Palin. So what I did to get my confidence up, to get my nerves to settle down, I, I rehearsed by apologizing to Tina Fey. <laughs> He is. He, what a, that, it, fucking person. hilarious, man. Yeah, he's firing he on all cylinders. Dude, he has, I'd say Letterman has more balls than I ever realized he had. He is, because the vice, a vice presidential candidate, instead of just shut up about it, which is what I would do in a fucking panic. Yeah. He's still making, he's still being funny. It's fucking he, great, man. Letterman has always uh, showed his balls when he needs to. Wow. You like you apologize to most people, like, all right, we're moving on, and then that's it. Yeah. Like, he's making jokes about sure. it. Sure. Uh, it makes him look better, and yeah. A protester walks behind Dave's desk. Yeah, hi. Can I help you? Is this the Fire David Letterman rally? <laughs> no, no uh, that, that's across the street, and I know you're Joe. You're one of the writers. <laughs> it's, not, it's not here. It's, it's across the street. Sorry. I have to go now. <laughs> I don't want to be late. I understand. Okay, good luck over there. You think... Do you think Justin and Eric both auditioned for that? <laughs> and their rotten, yeah, lousy yeah. acting, they couldn't get it? <laughs> Our two friends, the writers, yeah. the Stangle brothers? They I'm, probably fucked up. They kept calling him Jay and Conan. Wrong! <laughs> wrong! I bring in the other kid. Bring in the other guy, Jesus. Joe. We have a feeling we know which, uh, which guy wrote the joke. <laughs> we, we're not sure, but I haven't heard from those One of those two creepy brothers. <laughs> yeah, the, one of the creepy brothers. I want to know why they didn't the get joke. the acting gig. They've they, been there uh, longer. They, they watch a certain basement uh, program. Mm-hmm. Sam, they're all in with our activities. I've heard. Isn't they're Letterman tall. too too big to even like? No. They wouldn't even consider. Yes, they would. Oh, really? yes, they over would. something this Fuck. small. Dude, Why do you well, I miss when I miss. You know how much anybody. money I miss was bringing in. Yeah, you know how much money we were bringing in at the time. Yeah, you don't give a shit about that. And I'm not saying we're as big as Letterman. because no. uh, I'll hear that now. But fucking uh, yeah, Letterman. 
Yeah. No but one's what, safe in this environment anymore. No one. Okay, the, the next day, he would be scooped up by... Maybe. First of all, I'll say well, scooped up. And, and second of all, uh, he's probably have to sit his contract out. Really? Yeah. And, yeah. and third of all, if, if they go after your advertisers and they threaten advertisers all across CBS's platform and they get it rolling and advertisers start to pull out across CBS's... Uh, empire, then they fucking feel the financial. That's, it. that's bigger than Letterman. As that's much as Letterman is as big as he is. That's how they get you. Yep. Yeah. It's sickening, but I mean, that's the way it works. It is sickening, and no one's safe, unfortunately. That's the disadvantage to being with such a big company. The advantage is you can make so much money. Um, they can put you into so many households or on so mm-hmm. many radio stations at once, but the disadvantage is when they go after you and they threaten the advertisers, the company has that much more money to lose. You're and smaller. It, and it's deep, too, because you know, with radio, you, a company owned a radio station, whatever. Now it's like a corporate umbrella. Not only are they going after the radio advertising, they're going after Blockbuster and Nickelodeon or whatever the fuck uh, the properties whatever they are owned by these the days. They go after every single thing that your company's involved with. It's, it's ugly. Yeah. Uh, top 10 list. The uh, category tonight, wow, uh, talk about something uh, pretty close to home. The category tonight, uh, top 10 things overheard at the fire David Letterman rally. <laughs> Going on right now, and uh, we, we sent, uh, and I don't want to give away any secrets, but we sent in a mole. <laughs> uh, was over there and was able to uh, listen to the things that were being said and collate them and come back with the top 10 things being said. At the fire, David Letterman rally. Here we go, number 10. David who? (laughs) Number nine. Well, it was nice of CBS to provide the catering. What? (laughs) What? Uh, Number eight. We should have done this years ago. Number seven. What idiot turned Broadway into a pedestrian mall? Number six. (laughs) Number six. uh, Isn't there always a crowd demanding Letterman be fired? Uh, Number five, march around the potholes, people. Number four, can we also get CBS to bring back gun smoke? Uh, Number three, when does Cheney get here with the waterboarding gear? What? Oh, my God. Look out. Uh, Number two, he should apologize for that hairpiece. That's what he... And the number one thing overheard at the Fire David Letterman rally, thanks for coming, Regis. Not bad. Yeah. I love the fact that he's addressing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it leads to Sam. Sam was out there at the Fire David Letterman rally. Uh, let me let me see if uh, uh, he'll be running down. They're gonna the run hall. down the hall because there's nothing that gives me more joy than oh, oh he, he was, was already he outside was, the he door. He was outside. Do you like that, to see him running? That duck-footed idiot. He really is running a down the hallway. Quack quack quack. quack. <laughs> Aquatic sulch. The, this is gonna end with uh, Eastside Dave. I'm hearing Eastside Dave made uh, Access Hollywood, The Village Voice. Look, the Eastside Dave made Access Hollywood. He big. really did. Yeah, but that's yeah. a big deal. They the showed access. him with his sign. I made. I would like to make this announcement. Wait, wait. That Eastside Dave isn't talking. It just, no, he's not talking. It was it's just him and his sign. I no, it's oh, not okay, a big deal. What did the sign say? Uh, I am a right, uh, right wing nut. <laughs> That's very funny. But That's fucking goddamn what an asshole. I love it. Before we get all carried away, I would like to make the announcement that Mr. Norton was not the only one in the room who was on Fox News last night. Huh? Oh. Because primetime Sam Roberts was also on Fox News. So take that access, don't, Hollywood. Don't blink. What do you mean blink? I said don't blink. You'll well, mi- you'll Fox, miss you. Fox News is doing a worst hairpiece uh segment now. It's not a hairpiece, it's my actual Hair. It doesn't even look wow, like a hairpiece. What Jesus. the fuck? Well, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, it was. It was beyond. It was four levels below horrendous. <laughs> it's the complete opposite of a hairpiece. Yes. Well, you know what I mean. The, the way your much. hair is done. Well, we're not supposed to have to figure out what you mean. His hair looks like fucking General Urso's hat. The fucking Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> is that who his name is? Boss. I want you to leave the studio and start over. Okay. That For sounds real. good. I had a couple good lines already, though. I had one or you two. You go outside and you knock on the door and tell like us when you're ready to, to start over. More. Okay? There goes Voss. <laughs> he just made us a hairpiece joke. He doesn't know. He's, he's nervous. Your hairpiece. All right. Voss is outside the studio. When he's ready to come back and start over, he'll knock. Okay. Uh, what's the haps? Yes, Sam. Oh, boss Wait, you're stopping. knocking already? You're ready already? I'm, oh, look at that. Listen, let me explain Very something. fast regrouping. Let yes. me tell you something. When you, you know what? You fall off the ladder, you get right back on. 
Well, All right, I'll show what? it again. <laughs> a horse? Who the fuck? Oh, if he tripped and broke his big <laughs> oh, teeth. Oh, that'd be great. Rich, what is that fucking, uh, what is that device you have? What device? <laughs> That's not mine. Okay. What no. is it? It's, it's a timer. Just, it's a timer. Okay, okay. Okay. Thought it was something for your heart. <laughs> There's me. Look on Danny's screen. That's Sam on Fox News. Where? Oh, you're, you're in the background there. Be oh, like, wow. Crazy you're on the background lady. of a news channel. Suck it, Access Hollywood. <laughs> Suck it. Fox See, News. Well. But see, when our listeners do it, they got a nice sign or something. Yeah. Look, yeah, I got no one even there. knows that you're part of our show. My hoodie says Sirius on it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, How about an Opie and Anthony hoodie? <laughs> exactly. They didn't give us Thanks. any Opie and Anthony hoodies. Yeah, Why would they? Not. Why would they? They don't exist. What are those bright lights uh, down the hall? For real. Hopefully we're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> Are they filming something down the hall, or is that no, the sun a, reflecting off buildings? It, it actually it probably is, really is the sun, bright. and we have no idea what it's like. It's Carol Ann. <laughs> <laughs> this is my grapefruit. I wish it was a grenade so I could pull the pin and hold it and hug you. <laughs> Did not just make a poltergeist reference. Oh, really? That's a good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> where else? Right. Where else? You can you say? Don't look into the light. You know. It, well, so we have uh, Sam. Primetime Sam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like Jimmy's just I was right in shock. Out. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I was in shock. Uh, so you're out there uh, talking to the people that want Letterman fired. Yeah, I wanted to get to know the people, or maybe see if they could sway my judgment, see where they were coming from. We meet Patty. Yeah, not, not our Patty. Oh, right? No, no, no. Say. Okay. We're here with Patty at the David Letterman uh, protest. Patty, what's the haps? I'm um, here to protest David Letterman's uh, joking about rape. Sounds a little like Patty. Uh, it sounds like Patty. Sounds a little like her, but a little Ooh. different. Joke. Joke about rape. Yeah. They hate rape there. Wasn't a joke about rape, you dumb old cunt? Well, I brought that up in more polite words. Oh, okay. We're here with Patty at the David Letterman uh, protest. Patty, what's the haps? I'm um, here to protest David Letterman's uh, joking about rape. Uh, makes an excuse that it's uh, okay because um, she was 18 years old. He was raping about an 18-year-old. Uh, in my mind, raping uh, about an when 18 you're year 14 old? years old, you're 18 years old, or you're 40 years old, you don't joke about rape. But if the young lady was 18... Then doesn't that make it not rape if she was impregnated necessarily? Uh, in my mind, it makes it rape at any age. You're not getting the point. Just because she's 18, she's raped, doesn't mean it's rape. She loves to say rape. It's rape. <laughs> well, he didn't technically say rape. He just said that she got knocked up. She got knocked up. Knocked up is a, a term of consideration of rape. <laughs> <laughs> Holy lunatic! She's great. I love her. Yeah, she's she's really what a studio. fucking lunatic. What a classic. <laughs> Travis brought up the good point, uh, wondering if she'd seen the Judd Apatow movie Raped. Raped. Rape, and it's something to do with rape. Letterman never implied <laughs> Not rape. Up means no. rape. Letterman implied. No, Easy. Letterman implied, yeah. like, you know, horny. Letterman implied, a, not rape. Sexual relations. Right. Rape. Right. Rape. It's rape. Consensual. Want to hear rape. the last part of that again? <laughs> of course. Please. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't technically say rape. He just said that she got knocked up. She got knocked up. Knocked up is a, a term of consideration of rape. <laughs> Rape. So, the way she says rape. 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 So you can't make a joke of what this administration is doing to us financially. No. What are they doing to us financially? I have to take this one step further. I can't, I can't really say it because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to have to apologize. But they're uh, knocking us up. Get it? You know, a lot of times in studio when people laugh, then people listening think it's going well. That's, that's what That's what happens. They're not bad lines. That's a good line. <laughs> Our but ears you, are being raped. Okay. <laughs> so the right. country is Obama's raping the country? I didn't say him. I said the administration. That's not just one person. Yes. Financially, yes. Right know. now. That's what's happening. Anthony, where are you rape. on this one? I'm, um, <laughs> I'm looking at a test video of the Flip uh, Ultra. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Patty continues here. Sarah Palin accepted his apology. After Palin accepted his apology, do you think it was just like late to cancel the protest? Um, I did. I think he did it more for publicity. Conan's uh, on the air above him now, so uh, 
his ratings really? are way down. Are they? And he uses rape as getting his ra- uh, ratings up. Rape thing. Yeah, he's been beating Conan throughout the week. Do you think that's primarily because of rape? Um, it probably has to do with that. That's the only reason uh, people are turning on his show. I don't watch him anymore. I used to watch him all the time. How come? Um, basically because uh, things like this. The rape stuff? Rape, and um, he's uh, become very dirty, a dirty old man. Well, I guess those are the types of people that uh, appreciate rapes. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Letterman's a dirt. What? Wow. <laughs> what a fool. Do you have a picture of her? Uh, no. God, there, I want to see what she looks like. There are lunatics out there. Crazy the, every, people there come crazy out of the woodwork. Yeah, and those really are the don't. people that the fucking dumb lawyers that these companies listen to. It's that yeah, mentality. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Why would you You're listen right. to Patty and her rape analogy? There was maybe 35 to 40 people who were at this protest rape. against later, Letterman. Oh. And uh, but they were the extreme vocal minority, yes. so they were all insane, you know. And and uh, Jimmy just brings up a great point that rape, the, rape, <laughs> rape. <laughs> those are the people that are listened to. How about you parade those fucking lunatics? Let them pick out three representatives, walk them up to the CEO's office of whatever company is being harassed by these idiots, and let them talk for a minute. And if the CEO doesn't j- just say, get the fuck out of here, my guy's <laughs> staying, you're crazy, mm-hmm. then uh, he should be fired. God, you're yeah. right. Let that, Leslie Moonves talk to them face to face instead yeah. of just talking to the advertisers. Let them talk right. to some of the people, you know. Let the advertise, let the head of the company that they're, that is advertising with them talk to these idiots and then go, oh, wait a minute. These fucking morons aren't buying my product. Rape. Yeah, and if, Rape. And if they're hair products or anything that makes you look good products, they have yeah, exactly. nothing to worry yeah. about. Yeah, don't Rape. worry about that. Rape. <laughs> yeah. Because you know they all have great, gray, gray dry, frizzy hair. Oh, yeah. Rape. And Rape. you know what? I'm, you could picture Rape. them. They're all... Rape. 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 Uh, we talked to Joe, or Sam does. I talked Rape. to Joe. Who thinks we have too much freedom? Yeah, I'm, oh, I love shit. these people. Here's another idiot. Oh my! God. Wow, but, this but, has got to be. But they get the job this done. This guy man. Joe thinks we have too much freedom. It's it's that's guys, always good as an American. <laughs> yes, uh, Joe makes a good. Let's hear what Joe it has to say. It scares me right? that it's guys like Joe that forces Letterman to do an apology. We're here with Joe outside of Letterman. Joe, what's the haps? There's a double standard. What's that? The, the liberals can say whatever they want and get away with it. You know what? We've got too much freedom in this country, and it's not good. I agree. And, and the laws the laws are not meant for the good people. They're meant for the bad people. Because tough laws are only good for good people. I don't break the law, so I don't worry about the laws. This other thing with uh, Placido Burris, he got off because he didn't admit guilt. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. You should lock him away. As long just... as you have money, you can kill a person and get away with it. And that's the truth. Look at O.J. Simpson, but, huh? Yeah, there you go. It's a prime example. What does this have to do I mean, with... There's a, definitely a double standard in this country. And anybody to say that there's not... They have a problem. I agree. Are you surprised at the lack of turnout for this protest? This uh... no, because you know what? Uh, if Al Sharpton was involved, there'd be it would be mobbed all over the streets. But these, I work. Most good people that are uh, are, are for Sarah Palin uh, work. Al Sharpton can get those non-working people. It happens. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't mind. I know you know what you're saying. saying. I know what you're saying. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. You know what I'm saying. I like that guy. Sam baits him into it. You know what I'm saying, he right? Know. He knows. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Just yeah, some yeah, racist yeah. guy who thinks we have yeah. too much freedom. I do like that guy. <laughs> we, we could, what, you you could have got people for a remake of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. They were yeah. nuts out there. All crazy people. people. Nuts. <laughs> crazy lunatics. Like he's hey, making... Scott, go blow me. What happened? This guy what, what, says what? these people are Republicans like Anthony. Oh. <laughs> no, they, they're, pro- they're probably, yes, Republicans. Not like me, motherfucker. Oh. Scott from Wisconsin, shut up. Wait, you... Uh... Cheese head. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, you should have wanted Letterman fired, right? Yes, yes, I should have been out there protesting. You better talk to Scott. He's very busy. <laughs> Scott? Good morning. Hi, Scott. Very good show. Yeah, dude, this is how the Republicans sound, like George Bush lovers. Yeah, and what does that have and to what? do with me? You sound just like him sometimes when you talk that crazy Republican stuff. When do I talk crazy Republican stuff like that rape woman? Hmm. Oh, he's gone, I think. Yeah. Yes, you are gone, aren't you? You hung up, you fucking chicken shit cheesehead fuck. That's right. You won't hear me talking like that lunatic. Rape? I'm my own lunatic. <laughs> rape. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
we meet, uh, who do we meet next there? Barbara? Oh, yeah, Barbara. She was a peach. They're coming for you, Barbara. All right, we're out here with Barbara. Barbara, what's the haps? What's the what? Haps. What's the haps? What's the haps? What does that mean? It's like, you know, what's the haps? Oh, what's happening? Right. All right, we're here because we're a little bit... No, we're a lot angry ah. about a rape joke about a little girl sitting on the sideline of a baseball game. This is for you, Willa. Letterman says that the rape joke was actually about the 18-year-old. This is for you. Uh, um, uh, what's the 18-year-old's name? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, oh this is God. for you, 18-year-old. <laughs> this is for both of you. If she was 18, is that still a rape joke? Because that doesn't constitute statutory rape. Uh, being knocked up? Um, I... I don't think that's um, a funny joke. I've never heard a joke like that. Have you? Well, not since Letterman said it, of course. Well, Only when he said it. Uh, I don't think many people in America laughed. But if you go to the library and look up the meaning of funny, I don't think it'll go along with what he said. What does your sign say today? My sign says, shame on CBS and all of its sponsors. That's funny. Yes. <laughs> That's who these dumb yeah. motherfucking lawyers and advertisers are listening to. Listen, listen that to idiot. Her. They're protesting because they didn't find the joke funny. I know. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't funny. Boo. Wasn't, and, and she's saying no one found it funny. She knows. She took a Sam, poll of everybody. God. Sam, please tell me you have 30 more of these. They're I, great. I can I listen want, this all the way to 11. Yes. I want every single person there to, to, to talk and Holy sound off. shit. These fucking these zeros shit. are just trying to marry themselves to it, and they don't even know what they're protesting. They don't even know. She didn't even know her fucking name. And hey. these fucking corporate fruits listen to them. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention, too, the first woman that we listened to, the one that kept saying rape yeah. over and over again, uh. right before I started talking to her, one of the ladies who was organizing this whole thing pulled her aside and said, he's here to get material. He's not here for the cause. And so this was this 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 was this woman on her A-game. Like, no, nah, I'm not going to let this guy get material right, out right, of me. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah. say rape, rape, rape over rape. and over again. Rape, 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 rape. Uh, Dennis from South Carolina. Uh, I don't know why he has to say this because I think it's pretty obvious, but go ahead. Dennis. Hey guys, I just want to keep it honest here. You know, you, you realize you got the crazy nuts on the left from Code Pink and PETA and people like that. Sure, yeah, of, of course. course. Yep, yep. We but they're even also that. they're also the ones that these dumb motherfucking lawyers and advertisers listen to. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, I could give a shit what side these yeah. guys are on. When when you're so far right or so far left. You're in the same fucking category. Nut! <laughs> You're living in Long Island. Yeah, well. <laughs> All right, there you go. Island's okay. It's better than Jersey, you fucking the, piece uh, of shit. I think the nation's not used to us conservatives <laughs> protesting, so... Uh, we're, we'll just, take... we're just enjoying that uh, we're listening to nutty people. I don't give a shit where, you know, oh, what side they're on. Unless what side they're crap. on. I love this stuff. They're lunatics. Love listening to nuts uh, that like, should not even right. be... Shouldn't even be given the time of day by an advertiser or a, a corporate uh, broadcasting <laughs> corporate executive. They should be just thrown thrown out of the building, Absolutely. like Rupert Pupkin. Um, who's Liberty? Oh, Liberty. She was boy. Was she one of the ladies was she at hot the forefront? Under the collar. Oh boy, she was not happy, and she Liberty. was right at the front. And she let me know huh? her name's Liberty, so she's not going to be somebody who's going to bite her tongue. She's going to stand up for wow. what's right. That's what this country's all about. Liberty. Right. Lady Liberty. I'm here with Liberty outside Letterman. Liberty, what's the haps? What's the what? Haps, what's the haps? What's the haps? What does that mean? It's like, what's the haps? Well, the haps is we got to get rid of that old man who can make very disgusting hey, remarks hey, about children. Hey, I'm a mother. Hey, I'm a grandmother. Hey, I have two daughters, hey, three hey, granddaughters. Hey, and when he makes a remark... That A Rod should knock up her daughter and call her an airline stewardess slut when he had a bastard out of wedlock? Whoa, double standards. Whoa. Am I right? I think so. You think so? Well, that's what's happening. I think he's a dirty old man. He's a rapist. And you know what? In a roundabout way, he was raping that little girl. And he'd love to do it to Sarah as well. Rape her? He'd like to have sex with her. Forget about the rape. What, wait, is A Rod having a bad year? This, they, they are really kind of downplaying the word rape here. They're oh, yeah. really to putting it in a place where a woman that is actually raped should fucking be so angry with these 
asshole fucking uh, uneducated dolts. It's wonderful. That's we're in a country of knee jerk reactionary people. And that's what they're doing. And then they, the guy apologizes, and they want to be a part of the cause so yeah, yeah. fucking badly. It's like, oh, you apologize, but hey, we don't care. We're still going to go do this, and, and the news will be there, and I'll get to speak my piece and sound so intelligent. And, and meanwhile, they don't even realize how stupid they sound. This means that advertisers are actually getting letters saying, please stop advertising with David Letterman because he is a rapist. He's a rapist. She actually <laughs> just called a... That's fucking. <laughs> she called him a rapist. Like, isn't that slanderous? <laughs> of course it is. She didn't say in a way he's. She said, "I don't like David Letterman because oh he God. is a rapist. a rapist." David should go after her and get her pension. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> destroy her. He should, and then buy rape videos with them <laughs> and have <laughs> l- laugh at the rape video parties <laughs> and put them on YouTube. <laughs> get himself fired for real. <laughs> How do you like that one, oh protesters? God. Will I... in North Carolina? No, you can't. <laughs> no, I just wanted to hear no, the joke. Can't. I wanted to hear the joke. I don't even know what it was. Don't just don't acknowledge someone what, talked. What joke? That Letterman said. I don't know the, uh, what the joke was that everybody's in Where have outrage. you been? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? I've been preparing for a movie. I'm sorry. But where I didn't have time. You, where, do you, where, where were you in a Caddyshack movie? where the fucking little uh, the rodent yeah. lived? Yeah. A movie Whatever that, that I'm no longer part of. There's no fucking way. <laughs> Comedy likes. You're Fuck working no. with Bonnie, not with me. That's right. We're replacing you with <laughs> Jim Norton. Norton. I like being in the motion pictures. <laughs> Jimmy, you're now in the motion picture business. We, uh, in the motion picture business. we conferred me being co-producer. That's right. No? No. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, yeah. I want to be in the motion picture business. Hey, let's uh, say hi to Will in North Carolina. Look at Will. that picture. Will. Hello. Make him a I lied to the star. call. I just wanted to say a rape. Uh, okay. Put I'm his right. head in the bed. Right. <laughs> People are now lying just to say rape. God, I love our fucking lives. <laughs> it was the head, not the ass. <laughs> Li- uh, Liberty continues? Of course she does. She has a lot to say. She has excellent volume control when she speaks to <laughs> Yes! <laughs> wonderful woman to listen and to. And what were they chanting? They were first chanting shame, shame on uh, or shame on the sponsors, and then they started chanting shame on Olive Garden, which somewhere... Why did they eat there before they went to the rally? Shit. They were all a... shitting into their <laughs> shoes? <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on. You fucking assholes. God damn it, Bob. Yes. What? No, I think that the point that people are missing is that when uh, people were making fun of Obama's wife, Michelle, he came forward and said, she's out of bounds, and you're going to have to answer to me if you question her. There was a lot of respect that was shown to uh, Chelsea Clinton. I think it just should be the same thing for if it's a Republican. Now, here's the difference. Let me tell you something, my friend. Here's the big difference. Um, Chelsea Clinton was a very funny-looking little uh, 11-year-old girl, and that uh, when jokes were made, people said, eh, you know, I think even... even even people that were like uh, uh, Republicans were like, whoa, oof. you know, maybe you shouldn't goof on her. She's just a kid. Uh, this situation, when you get a, a girl that is coming from a family that is supposed to be this Republican family values bullshit uh, uh, company line that they have, and she gets knocked up, and she did get knocked up out of wedlock, it's uh, hypocritical. And to point it out in a joke is completely fine. Well, I, I, I can agree with that, that it is hypocritical, but the standard was set that families are supposed to be uh, off balance. They're not off limits. Fucking, uh, uh, you think Michelle Obama's off limits because Obama said you got to answer to me? Fuck that. It's just the fact that everyone's too big a pussy to fucking criticize him or her. Uh, and, and you get the scarlet letter R uh, uh, put on you if you make fun of the first family because they're black. So uh, that's the reason you don't see a lot of jokes going out. About uh, the first lady. I think people get sick and tired. You know, and, and I lean conservative with a lot of issues, not all of them. But like Dick Cheney and the administration stance on gay marriage and he has a lesbian daughter. And, uh, you know, they got very mad when Gore mentioned, I think, uh, or somebody mentioned his daughter being gay. But that was a fair mention. It's like, here you are saying this and your daughter's gay. Yeah. It's like they only want to cart their families out when it makes them look good. Exactly. It's like if you're going to bring your family out there and go, look at what a fine unit we are to try to get votes, then inconsistencies in your family with the values you're preaching should kind of be fair game too, no? Very good. Well, no, I agree with you on the hypocrisy issue, but when Chelsea was out there campaigning for her father, weren't there a lot of issues that weren't supposed to be brought up because they were family issues? No, no. Well, the second she came, became, uh, um, she was in the public eye campaigning for her father and then her mother later on, uh, she became fair game. But the thing is, she wasn't that... 
little weird looking awkward 11 year old anymore uh there were other things to goof on her about and people did goof on her and criticized her uh uh what she was even saying when she was backing her mom and things like that but it's it's a different story like jimmy said she paraded her family out there the husband the daughters the fucking little kid the whole schmear they, 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 she paraded them out there like, look at us. We are a family unit. And, and uh, our whole stance is family and making this country safe for families like us who believe in values. And, oh, my daughter's pregnant by some fucking lowlife uh, uh, that, that talks about fucking women on his Facebook page and shit. Uh, it was against everything she was preaching. So it's, it's fodder for jokes. Well, yeah, right. but you know what? That's not true, Anthony, because she no. could have family values and that and, and, and believe in that. And just because her daughter gets pregnant doesn't mean – look, I believe in don't get uh, – It's hypocritical. Uh, uh, it's not – she's not hypocritical. She can't control every action exactly. that her daughter exactly. does. Exactly. Yes. So why the fuck are they then trying to legislate and criticize other people that perhaps can't control the actions of their kids? Everyone else is a fucking asshole. Uh, oh, unwed fucking uh, mar- uh, uh, um, unwed mothers. Oh, God. We, get, we can't have that anymore. Oh, but girls getting pregnant. Uh, teen girls getting pregnant by their boyfriends. Oh, hello. You're a disgrace. You're this. They're, it's, it, they're pointing the finger all the time. That you are a piece of shit. You don't have the values we have. Uh, and then there you go. Well, okay. I, 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 I'm, I don't get high. So I see someone who gets high. I don't judge him, but I say, that's not my kind of person. I don't want to hang out with that person. Okay? I don't want to do coke. I don't want to be with that. So if my daughter got high, that doesn't change my opinion but you on rich, people. You don't legislate. You don't, you're, right, not, right. you're not in a position of legislating morality. You're not in a position... Of, of, of actually making decisions that other people have to live by. Right. Opinion is one thing, but when you're in a position to form decisions and you have a lesbian daughter and you're against gay marriage or at least the people you're with are against gay marriage and you don't speak out. And you have the power to m- make or break these people uh, based on uh, sexuality, their marriages, uh, uh, unwed motherhood. Then there's a problem. There's a conflict there. That fucking well, piece of shit Cheney sold out his fucking own daughter. That piece of shit... Even like I, the bottom line is just because you're, he, he's probably for gay marriage. He he's with the administration. He has to do what his constituency wants. So he can't just come out and go, fuck the system. You know, he's got to yeah. kind of vote the way that they yeah. say he should vote because he line, represents right. them. But to at least not offer your opinion and say, I don't agree with my party on this. My daughter is gay, but this is what my constituency wants, and this is what I'll do because they asked me to do it. It's like what a fucking sellout whore yeah, he if, is. If your whole life you believe. Uh, you're against gay marriage or whatever. Just because your kid is gay, that's not. So, but now he's saying something different. Change. I believe he's, he's he's got a different tone you know, now. You know, all of a sudden, you know, if your whole life you're, uh, you know, a racist, and all of a sudden your daughter's going out with a, uh, uh, you know, a black guy, that's not going to change you from being a oh. racist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Fell over right, there do, a second. I don't no, know what that's, I, that's true. I mean, all right, that's true. But I, I think that Cheney has changed his stance a little bit, and he's, he's a lot more lenient on it now. Than yeah, he, he is. He he says he's for it. He says, yeah, well, it's okay. a state issue, not a, a now federal that he's issue. A private citizen. Mm-hmm. It's just, well, it's you just, know, I can agree with with much of what you guys are saying. But yes, one sir. thing that you know, I think you you guys have faced personally is the inconsistency on the part of the media. You're right when it comes to certain issues. Do you, not to interrupt when, you. When, when Al Gore yeah. was uh, being nominated for the uh, presidency, the night before his son was picked up on a drug arrest, right. Gore called up the major news outlets and asked them, out of respect to the family, to kill the story, and they did. You're, now, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not wrong about that. would have gotten away with that? You're not wrong about that. And you're not wrong about the inconsistency in the media. Like, I'm very happy Letterman kept his job. He absolutely should have. Yeah. But I don't think Media Matters targeted him the way they targeted Imus. The media is very leans left. They Let's be honest. You're right. Liberals can get away with saying more about conservatives than conservatives can yeah. about liberals. Yep. I mean, it, it is a double standard. But just because it's a double standard, Letterman shouldn't suffer for, for the disgusting no. behavior of other people. Oh, no, he, he, shouldn't, he should not lose his job because people should in this country should get a thicker skin about jobs. I agree. Oh, sure. Okay. But I think that it should be spotlighted that if the shoe was on the other foot, if the political coin was flipped, it would be a different reaction on the part of the media. You yeah, are, yeah. He's correct no, about no, that. You're, you're right about that. The liberals do get a lot more... Um... A lot more leeway as far as the media goes sure. than the conservatives do. Yeah. All right. Let's get back right. to the well, funny. Put you out. Thanks, Same, man. I mean, uh, we got Liberty. Part yeah. two of Liberty at the David Letterman protest. Do you really consider Letterman to be a rapist or just a comedian? 
He's a rapist. He <laughs> raped Sarah Palin's daughters. <laughs> daughters. Both. He should be on the sex offenders list because he is a sex offender. That man there is a the sex offender. What information is this based on? My information. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. I have two daughters, three granddaughters, and no man will talk about any child like that. Not while I'm alive. Technically, 18 is an adult. Honey, he had a son out of wedlock. He had a little bastard, Harry, and he didn't want to marry his airline stewardess slut for five years. So is that a double standard or not? Boy, Sounds like it. Oh, thank you. Will we feel better if Harry gets raped? Maybe he'll be gay. <laughs> like that guy. And maybe he'll be sucking somebody off. <laughs> maybe he'll suck off Paul from the band, right? Well, maybe. You never. You can never tell. Jesus. <laughs> this woman is a fucking enigma. But she's talking about a, a little, a legitimately a six-year-old boy right. sucking, like, right, right. being gay yeah. and raped. Yes. Right. Jesus. What Liberty. the fuck? Go fuck what she yourself, said Liberty. was so much worse than anything David Letterman did. Way over the line. <laughs> you don't just get on that list. <laughs> yeah, you can't just get on there. you got to work at it. Raped. God, he <laughs> raped those two girls. Yes, Jesus. and then he should be on the sex offenders list. Then she Just, started screaming at the building about how the building there was go? an. Oh, it's a bug! It's a bug! <laughs> there should be it. rape rape victims across the street it. protesting yep. those people. Holy shit! It's, that woman's out of her fucking mind. Liberty? Yeah, Liberty. You're good at that stuff, Sam. I would get too emotional or too angry, but you know what I'm saying. Sam just Sam plays it perfectly. Like, yeah, yeah, really. You can hear him laughing. Well, I could never have a legitimate conversation with any of those people. True. You're not going to change no, their no. mind. And it's, they're not as smart as a normal person is. <laughs> like, they're stupid. <laughs> Why would you talk to them? <laughs> like, they're <laughs> they're not you're, human beings. Yes. <laughs> you're harvesting material. Exactly. You would not talk to these people. What, Just what, let them keep talking. When I heard right. Liberty say, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, <laughs> my first thought was, oh, the poor kids. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you have to deal with that though. shit in your no, life. No, I just went by myself. We have to stay here for Grandma Liberty. Is she coming? Oh, All right. I just want to. No. I don't like Grandma Liberty. <laughs> no. Her breath smells. Yeah. Actually, if you look at the Fox News video that I was on, yeah. you could see Liberty. Oh, that was her? Yeah, Liberty's in, in the, the yellow, yellow jacket. jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. fiercely. Uh, Fiercely leading the pack. Who is that bitch? Well, good news. There were Wait people that, that were for David Letterman. We got yes. one of those uh, cool. one of those people next year. Just Justin from the Ed Sullivan bit. Theater. <laughs> <laughs> Just to mix it up a little bit, we got uh, that. But you, you want to see Liberty? Yeah, oh, I yeah. do. I have to. I, I I want nothing more than to see Liberty. Is that Liberty right there? No, that's not Liberty. They all have shitty dry hair too. Yeah, the big messes. Some of the people wouldn't talk to me. Language. <laughs> Who's this? Fucking Steven Spielberg? Dennis Hopper. <laughs> Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. What are they going to say? Dave Letterman was a wise man. <laughs> he was a kind man. <laughs> Liberty's head in his lap. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know what? If you didn't know what the issue was, you couldn't tell if these people were conservative, conservative or liberal because they're all insane when you get to that level yeah, of protest. I think they're beyond even like... I mean, they have their yeah, partisanship, yeah. but I think that they're just fucking, they're nutty people who desperately want to be heard. Yeah, yeah, they need an outlet. They, they never have one. They go home, their their husbands just ignore them because they're fucking she babbling shitheads. That's but, her with the big sign right there with those glasses. But look, look at her wanting to be a part of things so yeah, yeah. badly, so oh. ill-informed. Look at her, oh, we're going, we're going, okay, you go, I'll meet you there. Yuck. She making very... plans, could you imagine her making the plans beforehand? Sure. Well, her sign yeah. is extremely wordy and typed. Yeah, really, what the fuck, how could you read that? You so, can't. So, Liberty, what do you want to do before we get ready? Well, let's let's eat a lot and then put on Dr. Octopus's glasses <laughs> yeah. and a yellow outfit and then head out the door with a long sign that nobody will read. That was a De Niro oh. at the end of Casino Glasses. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Hope she's she got, got the that. same car. She's, <laughs> she's picking horses. <laughs> she's, she's a body like Pesci. She should be in her underwear being tossed into a hole in fucking Indiana. <laughs> Liberty's a silly goose. Her sign was uh, was littered with misspellings. Of course it was. Oh. <laughs> Just Why wouldn't well, you crazy. can't attack There's somebody for that. Why wouldn't it? Oh, was. Yes. <laughs> Why was. sticking up for that part of it. Uh, why don't we meet someone that was for David Letterman? Excellent idea. Balance it out. Here it is. Would you mind? What? 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 What's the haps? What? Uh, what does that mean? What's the haps? 
Well, I see you're making quite a ruckus here. I'm very upset at what David Letterman has said about raping children and pooping on them and feeding them in improper uh, places and taking them out to the laundry yeah. and spinning them on the ground and playing them with wiffle ball and using them to bowl and putting punch on their heads and feeding them Cool Ranch Doritos when nacho cheese is clearly the more delicious brand. You didn't say any of that, sir. Okay, well then I'm wrong, and I must leave this protest now. Goodbye, everyone. Don't leave! Don't leave! I have to go home! Don't leave! Sir, who are you talking to? Damn it, everyone's in on this! Who are you talking to? It's not funny! Sir, who are you talking to? I'm talking to the press over here! Where are you from? Where are you from? What are you? What is this? Sir! Yes, sir. You're making a mockery of this protest. Who is he from? You're the Presserazzi. <laughs> Do you know what your name is? Sir. Are you with the Letterman Show? No, am I for rape? <laughs> huh? That's like asking me if I'm for Nambla. <laughs> and I am. But keep that on your <laughs> Sir, did you just say you represent Nambla? I do. What's your name? Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? God damn Dave is a funny man. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> Who was he entertaining? Dave? He, all the press just started they circling him. him and just like laughing at him because he was making a mockery. He then rolled around on the floor and started barking like a dog and <laughs> laid did. down and lifted his shirt up and exposed his stomach. And God damn. Just, uh, oh, what do we got there? Um, uh, uh, good. No. Uh, what? Nothing new. Just scroll down a little. <laughs> no. Whatever you want to do. That was great. And that's that it. That's funny, man. Yeah, there were God. a lot of... Uh, Crazies out yesterday. That was bravo to Sam. He, he found some kooks for us. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Oh. And the, I mean, don't let liberty make you forget about Patty. No, no, no. Patty was good too with the rape. The two rape. MVPs of the pack. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were the. They were right. definitely the standouts. Definitely. Oh, to wrap up our Letterman thing, this is a big clip today, I guess. New controversy. Jack Black was on a show. It's really quick. Uh oh. And, uh, it's going to be wild, I bet. Yeah, he let out an F-bomb. Because the phoenix <laughs> will really... I wanted to say a different word there. Will rise yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Like junk, chicka, junk. It's more, yeah. it's more than like a junk, chicka, junk, chicka, junk. Because the phoenix oh. will fucking rise again. Well, no shit. <laughs> the hell was that? Ugh. Phoenix. Where was the F bomb, by the way? It was in the fucking, nah, uh, he said like that. Yeah, you can barely tell. So sick of that singing shit. Not a fan of the singing shit, eh? No! Uh, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm not! Yeah. He thinks he's, uh... I don't sing when I go on talk shows. Oh, uh, uh, look at how crazy I'm a fan of the eyebrow eye. thing he does. Oh, the eyebrow, yes. <laughs> I love so when he does the eyebrow Same photographer as Bobby Kelly has. The fuck Jack Black. Go fuck yourself. That's a Belushi it. thing, though. No yeah. shit. I mean, that's Belushi's thing. He should do that other thing he did. Could, you know, the last thing? Yep. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Ooh, wow, that just Black put us all wild. in a bad mood. He's wild. Yeah, oh, he's totally crazy. Wild. Yeah. Another we... picture with the eyebrow. <laughs> all right, we get it. How many eyebrow pics that, do we have? Every Jack picture Black. of him. Every one? Every Google single Google image him. Wait, let's guess. No, no, no. All right. I'm going to guess 4,375. <laughs> Pictures of him with the eyebrows. Yes. Yeah. 